So is the connectivity okay um, and uh, sound? Uh, if you can get technician to check uh, for Yako as well, because we always have challenges on that. We will do um, so, Chair. Yeah. So can I just check, uh, uh, are those all the members that we have connected? Yes, Chair. Wait, Mr. Thring, Chair. And oh, I've Thring. Now, now see Mr. Thring is just connected, Chair. Oh, wonderful. Honorable Thring, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Honourable members, I think uh, we, we do actually have the number or quorum of the meeting. We would like actually just because we did get the part of the apology, it's a uh, card that will be joining us later. And uh, for the rest of the other committee members, at least we have uh, connected. So technical issues we'll have to actually look at. Let's look at the agenda. Uh, if you can be able to fly at it so that we can look at the items we have to deal with. Um, Secretariat? Um, Margo will be that. sharing the, the document, Chair. Here we go. Okay. All right. We, we're actually looking at the adoption. There are three presentations. <coughs> can I actually then um, just say it's presentation of the CIPC, presentation of the NCR, and the last part is the formal consideration of the third quarter uh, DTIEDD report. Can I actually then ask members to actually comment on that? Uh, if comfortable, can we actually ask you to adopt the agenda as presented, honorable members? Honourable members, uh, if you can watch the hands and uh, uh, the communication, uh, Andre, because you remember that there's... The yeah, I was just checking the chair. Um, Mr. Mbuyani is raising his hand, chair. Okay. Uh, Honourable Mbuyani. Yeah, Chairperson, uh, good morning. Morning, uh, Mbuyani. Yeah, I rise to propose that we adopt the agenda, Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Mbuyane, and, and Mr. welcome. Chair, just Mr. McPherson yes. wants to raise his hand, but he also indicated he may also leave the meeting as soon as Mr. McPherson, Mr. Cutbert arrived. But Mr. McPherson raised his hand, Chair. Mr. McPherson? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chair, Honourable I just need to let you know that I will have to uh, leave uh, before 10 o'clock because I've got uh, 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 party business interviews uh, that I have to deal with uh, from 10 o'clock. But uh, hopefully the... Um, uh, Mr. Cuthbert will be back by then. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I thought you will say you second the adoption of the agenda. Chair. I'll leave that to Judy. Chair. 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 <laughs> yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank I, you I rise Chair. to... Yes, Judy. I rise to second the adoption of the agenda. My uh, you, sound Madam. is back now. Thank you. Okay. No, for that apology, I think we'll know to that Secretariat, McPherson, Chair? saying that we, they will be swapping with Cuthbert when he comes in. Uh, Chair? Andre? Ms. Mutahung has just arrived. She can also just indicate the presence, Chair. Ms. Mutahung. Okay. Honorable Mutahung. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Morning, everyone. I'm present. Thank you very much. Uh, it's good that you properly connected. Can we then proceed, honorable members? We, we will take our first presentation. And uh, can we actually welcome then the uh, CEO, uh, uh, Commissioner Vola, if you can be able to then proceed um, to actually take us through the presentation. You're going to show it up, I'm sure. Um, yes, Chair. The presentation. Yes, Hold on. Yeah, so let's do that. And uh, can we welcome the Commissioner and the team? And uh, obviously, we do actually have the side of ministry department. Uh, we haven't actually acknowledged individually, but we know that they are present and registered. I've got a total of 29 connection. I'm sure it includes uh, the department and ministry as well. Can we then proceed with the presentation, Commissioner? 
Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and Honourable Members, for the opportunity. I am ready to proceed. Uh, please forgive me. I'm, uh, my knowledge of team is a bit limited. Uh, we seem to use a lot of Zoom these days, but I'll, I will see how best it goes as I go along. I will start putting the presentation up on the screen. Uh, is the presentation visible, uh, yeah. Chairperson? Yes, yes. No, I can see it. Uh, I okay, hope you remember. Under remembers, I'm sure you can see the presentation. It's flighted up. Uh, uh, I think, Commissioner, it ha it's actually visible. I'm sure okay. you can actually. You're free to proceed. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I will proceed. Uh, I will do a quick update exactly where we are in, in a couple of areas. There's one a bit of a crackle, would... Honourable Commissioner. There, there's a bit of a crackle on your voice. You can just oh, check sure. on it, but you can hear you. It's a bit of a crack. Okay. I don't know. Maybe they just check the device so that at least Perfect. we don't have the cutting when you talk to okay. us. The floor is yours. Sorry for the disturbance. Okay. No problem, Chair. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Presentation will deal with a couple of areas. First, we'll deal Secretary, with how we. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh, the first will be as to how we responded and what certain um, actions were taken by the organization to deal with areas related to COVID-19. I will then deal with areas that are related to what we as an organization has done to resume our services and going forward, how we will assist as far as being up, up to speed and obviously dealing with our delivery uh, as per our normal CIPC mandate. The first action, uh, Chairperson, is that CIPC was contacted uh, a day after the president announced that uh, the level five lockdown will be taking place. And how could we as an organization assist in getting a system whereby essential services uh, companies are allowed to um, apply, uh, cross-referencing with the registry, and they are receiving uh, what we call an essential services certificate uh, for them uh, to be able to uh, remain open during the various levels uh, of the COVID lockdown. So we then went about and were given a two-day lead time to develop a system and to test it. Um, we were in uh, close discussions with the ministry and the department at every juncture of our development, which is uh, quite a, a short period in which to deal with the development of a system, but we had a BIS portal system that we could utilize and basically try to build on that particular platform in order to us to, to have an essential services certificate um, um, application uh, um, system up and running by the time that it was required by the 27th of March. Um, we had demos that we had done to the department. We were quite happy with the first set of uh, certificates that, that, that were demonstrated. And we thereafter added the functionality to what is called the BIS portal system. Uh, for those who don't know, the BIS portal system is an integrated system between various departments that deal with the starting of a business. Uh, it was launched by uh, the president on during the investment conference in November of last year, and it has seen some great success in cutting down the time. Uh, in, in order to start a business, not only do we deal with it in terms of company registrations, but we also deal with it in terms of labor departments such as UIF, Foundation Fund, uh, SARS, uh, etc. So during the first uh, level of level five lockdown, we received approximately 270,000 companies that applied for essential services certificates. It was a massive uptake. The very first day that we went live, the system crashed because of the volumes of registration, oh, sorry, applications that we were receiving. But we managed to bring it back fairly, fairly quickly. And uh, it, we managed to pump out very, very, lots and lots of companies during the first uh, period of, of the lockdown. Um, th thereafter, what happened is that uh, during the extension of the lockdown, uh, we were then uh, uh, asked by the, by the ministry, as well as uh, the South African Police Service, to deal with certain aspects that they were having when it comes to certain businesses being open and certain businesses presenting the essential services certificate when there are roadblocks, for example, um, that SEPs run. So we then uh, added additional... Uh, um, can, the... can I, um, Honourable Commissioner, can, can yes. I just say, ask that we just check because I think you crackling and the, the line is breaking. Oh, so sure. if I can just ask the um, the technical guys to be actually just check uh, how we can actually sort that out 
so, sorry to intervene or disturb you, but you, you, no problem. you're cutting you cutting at certain points. Can we just take a, a mm -hmm. five minutes break and ask that we pick up on that because I thought it will get better, but it's getting worse. Can I just Chair, take five minutes? Yes, uh, Andre. Yeah, you very clearly. I will all, we have a technical person on the site, Chair, who can maybe try to address it uh, immediately. Um, yeah. Namshla, if he can come in, Chairperson. Also, Mr. Kutbeth has arrived, has also joined the meeting now, Chairperson. Yeah. But Namshla yeah. will be able to assist us yeah. if he can assist can I us. Just take, can I then, Andre, agree that let's just take five minutes so that they yeah. sort that out, please? Because okay. I, I, can, I can see that we, we're losing him and uh, yeah. it's getting worse. Yeah. If, so, I Chair, if you can... Minutes? Yeah, you yeah, do that and switch off your your, your your video and your and your and your voice and then we will work with Rory with from the side chair. Please, please, if Thank you can him. do that. Sorry, yeah. honourable members, can we just uh, sort that out? And I'm sure it's not fair to allow it to continue in this quality. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Namshla, can you can you assist? Andre, um, Andre, I'm I'm here. Um, okay. Could you could you give me could, could you give me um, Rory's number on the side? Um, I just want to check his internet connection because that's the problem. Hello. I can I, I can hear you guys yes. very very clearly. Um, Rory, just try switching off your audio, not your audio, your video, and then speak. Okay, I switched off my camera. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three. Can you hear me? That's I much better. Much better. Is it? Okay, yeah. I'll just switch that off <laughs> because I can hear you guys very clearly. Uh, can you can you just speak one sentence of your of the a bullet point without interruption that we can hear? Okay, all right. Uh, during the extension of a lockdown, CIPC issued all applied companies new certificates with additional wording to meet the additional requirements of the South African Police Service. Rory, can you give me your, can you give us your cell number quickly? Then 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 so that um 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 Noms, can contact you. Yeah. Oh wait, two. Oh eight two, two nine one, two nine one, three zero three six, three zero, three six, three six. Got it. Thank you. Namsha will call you now, and maybe maybe we'll be able to 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 address it. Okay. Thanks. Hello, Namla. Sorry. Are you talking to me? Yes. I'm muted. Hi, Secretariat. Hi, Hello. Chairperson. We Hello. are just we are still in the process of, of Namshla is speaking to to Mr. Fuller. Okay. Uh, so we we'll we'll I'll I'll connect when we, we're ready to go, Chair. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay, great.
Okay, do you want to test again? Yes, can you try and, and, and read just one sentence for us, please? Okay. Uh, CIPC thereafter was involved in additional essential services categories coming um, online during the lockdown. Is that look better? Read Locked. again, because what's happening is that you, it's it's the projection changes. You know, um, we can hear you oh, at some point. It goes down. It goes oh, down and then it starts up I, again. I have absolutely... Well, let me try this. Let me, let me put the earphones on with a mic and see if it works differently, okay? Okay. Let me try that one second. Can you hear me? Yeah, I yes. can hear you now. Can you read one sentence to us? Okay. Uh, CIPC thereafter was involved in additional essential service categories coming online during the lockdown. That, perfect. I think, I'm sure we've covered now. Yeah, perfect. Is it, is it much better? Much better. Yeah, way better, che yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, what I've done is I've put, I, I'm using the earphone mic. Yeah. Hi. Chairperson, we may yes. proceed. It's much better now, Chair. Okay. Can, can I just do this then? Um, I think it may be important for me to also, just for the purpose of today's meeting, on this false start so that we can proceed properly. I thought uh, it may be important uh, that we confirm that as oversight of government's response to COVID-19 pandemic, the committee has decided to engage the entities of the DTIC that are or will be contributing to these intervention measures. The committee has requested the identified entities to brief it on matters that have been regulated under the declared national state of disaster. Some of the identified entities may also play roles that are not directly linked to the regulations but are critical to mitigate the impact of the consumers and business over the short and medium term. Today, the committee will be receiving briefing from the CIPC and the NCR. The CIPC has been involved in providing its BEES portal platform to enable the issuing of the certificates to companies that qualify as essential services. Going forward, it will also have a role to play in terms of overseeing business rescue practitioners and monitoring the situation for distressed companies. And among others, the NCR will be playing a following role as the situation unfolds in the full, full up economic impact of the pandemic. Oversee debt intervention that are being implemented by credit provider and ensuring that these do not prejudice consumers, ensuring that the legislation be protect consumer from scrupulous lending practices that are complied with, overseeing access to the credit during the pandemic, as a number of the households may not be have access to an income over the short term. For example, the implementation of Section 11 of the National Credit Act. In terms of the over-indebted consumer, debt review intervention exists to assist them. This includes overseeing the implementation of the existing debt review option and consideration of the implications for people who are currently under debt review but may not be able to meet the obligation due to the job losses. Let me just say, that's a summary of what we expect in terms of the engagement of the presentation. Uh, we are going to take the first part. Can I actually then allow the commissioner to proceed, starting from, so it just was a false start, uh, commissioner. So if you can start again, sorry for that. Thank you. Floor is yours, commissioner. Voila. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Should I start from the beginning or should I continue where I please, left off? Please, please, please start from the beginning. Uh, okay, I will do so. Um, let me just go up quickly. All 
it doesn't seem like the the presentation seems to be working. One second, let me just reboot that. Uh, in the show and start it again. Uh, okay. Here we go. Okay, Chairperson, uh, let me let me repeat. Uh, to say that when the president announced the lockdown, um, CRTC was thereafter contacted by the ministry as well as the department to see how best we can assist with dealing with the issuing of what is called essential service certificates. I think you highlighted it in your introduction. Um, we were then uh, engaged with the ministry in order for us to look at how can we use a system in order for companies to apply and thereafter receive um, a certificate that meets certain requirements in order for them to remain open during the various levels of, of, of the national lockdown. Uh, CIPC was given a two-day lead time uh, to develop the system and implement it. Our wording was uh, quite strict as far as trying to look at what the Disaster Management Act and regulations uh, were stating, as well as um, additional compliance that was uh, placed on us by the ministry in order for us to, to deliver, develop a system that will meet certain scrutiny as per the South African Police Service. Uh, we then went and developed uh, what could be utilized because there was a very short lag time that was required of us. And as you know, it takes quite a bit of time to develop a system, especially when using automated means, using at the back end in terms of databases and networks. So we decided to use the Biz Portal system. Uh, for those who don't know, the Biz Portal system uh, was launched by the CIPC in November last year during the investment conference by the president as a means to improve on the starting of a business. Uh, it encompasses uh, other entities like the UIF and the Compensation Fund, uh, SARS, um, and, and the like. So it's been, in, it's been in existence for a few months. So we decided to use that particular functionality to plug in the COVID-19 essential services certificates applications and therefore to, 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 um, to leverage off the development cycle that we already were in and also to use the back-end system of the, the normal CIPC registry in order for us to do cross-referencing of companies that apply. Um, during the first phase um, of the lockdown, uh, the level five lockdown, approximately 270,000 companies applied for essential services certificates together with the numerous uh, amount of employees that were part of the regulation in terms of 113B that were allowed movement uh, during that particular phase. So we captured all of that information, we put all of that information into a database, and we currently have an essential service certificate database that is utilized for various reasons in the ministry, as well as looking at statistics um, and the like. Uh, but what happened was is that because we were, in, we were in such a hurry, and because the development uh, cycle was very short, um, we developed a certificate that was uh, found to have a bit of scrutiny and needed a bit of reinforcing, especially from the side of the South African Police Service. Uh, they were conducting raids, they were conducting roadblocks, and they wanted us to uh, have additional wording uh, as per the certificates. So we then went about and did that. Uh, we went about reissuing of the first line of level five certificates. Uh, nobody had to reapply. We basically did it uh, on, on, a, on a proactive basis by, by basically emailing uh, the, the reworded certificates to the companies that originally applied, as well as also developing a download uh, uh, system or capacity on the essential services application in order for those companies to, to basically download it as well. Uh, we, we, we then went into the second phase um, of, 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 of the lockdown in terms of level four uh, from the 1st of May. Uh, we were then um, uh, uh, required by the ministry to add the additional industries and, and uh, companies onto the particular uh, level. And uh, we thereafter updated the, the BIS portal system by add, uh, adding additional categories to the system. And uh, as of today, we probably just over... You'll see my presentation says 300, sorry, let me just change it. My presentation says 360,000 companies, but as of yesterday, we're sitting on 440,000 companies that have applied for essential service certificates over the period level five and level four. I should say that uh, we, what we've also done is that we've widely informed the public as to what the essential service certificates are. We've also widely used the BIS portal and CIPC websites and social media platforms to clarify application criteria and additional information on how to use the system. I must say, Chair, it has been an enormous task. We received thousands and thousands, as you can imagine, 
inquiries on a daily basis. Even today, we'll be sitting here and there'll be, there'll be thousands of them coming in. But what are we seeing is that some, there is a common understanding of what is required in terms of the companies that apply, as well as the fact that they need to ensure that they meet the essential services regulations as per the Disaster Management Act. What we've also done at the CIPC is that we created dedicated query resolution lines and teams in order for them to deal with essential service certificates uh, and queries, as well as um, we've also had uh, communication uh, teams put together that go out and do radio shows, they go out and do television shows, they go out and speak uh, in South African police service um, um, uh, information sessions. Just yesterday, for example, uh, my team member was in Orlando Stadium together with the South African police service speaking about uh, essential services as well as dealing with the issue about uh, application and consequences for companies who apply who do not meet the criteria to be designated as an essential service. So we also deal with that aspect uh, in terms of that. Uh, this is what the certificate looks like, Chairperson, uh, uh, Honorable Members, for those who have not seen it. I'm sure many, if not everybody, has seen what it looks like. If you go to any of the stores, most of them have them in the store windows or in the shop front or in the place where you, the, where you pay for your goods, those that are allowed to be open, in order for them to prove that when the South African Police Service comes to scrutinize why are they open, they're able to uh, look at the category to which they open, as well as the contact details for persons who have applied, so that we can hold people responsible if they have uh, applied for a certificate uh, and they're not supposed to do it. Also, what we put out in terms of information, and we have lots and lots of these information screens that, are go, that go out on our website, on our Twitter page, on our Facebook pages, in order for us to continue to educate the public, to inform them exactly what the criteria is, to inform them what the categories are, and to ensure that we also warn them that they, are, um, that they should only apply if they meet those particular categories. What we shy away from, uh, uh, Chairperson, and what we do not do at the CIPC, because it's not our mandate, we do not advise the public on essential services. We are not experts in it. Like everybody else who's finding their feet as far as the regulations is concerned, we do not go and give advice so that if a company applies for an essential service certificate and they are not part of the categories, they can't come back and say, but the CIPC told me. We do not do that. And we're quite clear, we haven't put out a notification yesterday, a little bit of a practice note to inform the public that we do not get involved in that. It is the public's responsibility for them to look at the regulations, to see if they meet the criteria, and it is the responsibility of, 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 of COCTA, we believe, to advise what they are. We are basically using, and the public is basically utilizing a system that was developed by us, a fully automated one. Just to put some other criteria across, uh, Tippers, is to say that the system can only be utilized uh, by registered companies, uh, not companies that have been struck off or deregistered or liquidated. We've had some of those who have tried their luck. We've picked them up because we have classifications on our own registry that designate companies whether they are allowed to trade or not to trade based on their business uh, status. Uh, we also use it as a, a means to cross-reference uh, against the CIPC registry to ensure that those who apply meet the requirements and the legal status of being a company, and therefore we were able to utilize the information that we have on our registry in order for us to ensure that those companies are legal and allowed to trade. Uh, as I stated, the system is fully automated. There's no human intervention or examination. We do not examine uh, the applications, and I will come to that uh, later in our presentation as to some of the problems that we've experienced as far as this is concerned. Um, the system also fully states that uh, it, it's disclaimed. It is the company's requirement and responsibility to ensure that they meet the requirements. And, uh, and in this regard, um, uh, we place the, the onus and the burden on the applicants that they meet what the law states and what has been presented as far as the regulations is concerned. Uh, we also state fully, not only on the application process, but also on the certificate that if you have a false declaration, declaration of essential services, you become legally liable for that because you have submitted false information, and therefore we will take that up with the South African police service as we passed on some companies that we found that have not met the criteria to be an essential service. Uh, 
uh, what we say also, uh, uh, Chairperson and other members, that we do it in two ways to determine if a company has not complied. And by no means is this is a definitive list or definitive criteria. The one is that we have seen a lot of the public informing us of businesses that they have seen open that they do not believe meet the criteria. We thereafter look at what the registry states, we look at the category that they've applied for, we look at the type of business, and we do a revocation of that particular certificate, and we email that revocation to the company, informing them that they are not allowed to trade. But what we also have is that we have a system where the company can thereafter appeal uh, to, to us. They, they come to us and they give us certain criteria. We make them fill in affidavits to state that maybe because uh, the category they filled in was irregular or the person that they use or in the company to, to apply did not apply the correct criteria. Or alternatively, what we've seen is that certain companies trade in various different sectors. For example, if you have a company like uh, Bidvest, uh, they might be registered under logistics, but they're also involved in food manufacture and food supply and the rest of it. So that's exactly what we've seen. So some companies will be revoked. Uh, we've also placed them back on the register. That is the one. What we've also done is we've done a, a proactive analysis of some of the data. So, for example, if we see companies that are not allowed to trade, for example, restaurants, bars, taverns, uh, or, uh, many other categories, we look at the company type, we look at the name of the company, and if it has those particular designations contained within that, and they have applied for the essential services certificate, we dare after revoke those certificates and we pass it on to the South African Police Service and the Ministry in order for them to take the matter up. It's not the CIPC responsibility to deal with the prosecution. We pass it on to the prosecuting authorities in order for them uh, to deal with the matter going forward. Uh, what we also do, uh, Chairperson and Honourable Members, is on a daily basis, every morning, we pass on the full essential services list to, to, the, to the Ministry. Uh, and the ministry does an analysis on it. Uh, they've got teams in the back end that do an analysis on um, the information and the data that we've passed on to them. Uh, this basically is what the, the final page looks like. As we say, we congratulate you for applying, successfully applying. But we also warn you that uh, if you've applied incorrect information, it's a criminal offense, lead to prosecution, and therefore we use various means of informing them that they should be very wary of not dealing uh, and not applying uh, for essential services if they are not found to be part of uh, that particular category. Uh, now, this is some of the, the aspects that we found uh, in terms of, of some of the analysis that the CIPC has looked at. Uh, number one, uh, and this is a question that we get on a continuous basis, on a daily basis, one is that the system does not accept any other form of business. So we do not accept sole proprietors, trading trusts, industry bodies, partnerships, and the like, uh, 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 because our mandate as a CIPC is to only deal with companies, as you are aware, uh, chairperson and honorable members. So it only extends to companies in terms of what we're legally uh, allowed to do, and therefore we cannot open the portal to other uh, uh, business types because we have no mechanism to cross-reference. We can't reference a sole proprietor. We don't have any um, electronic means of verifying trading trust and, 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 and we can't do it <coughs> partnership because those type of businesses are not registered anywhere. So we can't cross reference. We don't know what categories they're in. We don't know who to contact in case something goes wrong and therefore the portal is only utilized for that. Um, uh, our understanding from what we received is that the Department of Small Business as well as the municipalities, they deal with other types of businesses, especially the informal type, the smaller type, uh, and, and the businesses that fall into other trading types. Um, and they are, have a system in place. Just yesterday, um, I see that the, 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 that the Gauteng province has, has got an online system now. The Houghton province has got an online system for informal traders and informal businesses in order for them to make an application uh, for essential services. So I, it looks like it's becoming part of, 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 of what is uh, the municipality and the provincial government is taking care of, as well as the small business uh, uh, ministry. Uh, the ministry has also released um, uh, two media statements, if not more, clarifying the requirements for, for applying for essential services, as well as ensuring the public and companies and those who want to trade, that there are severe penalties for those making fraudulent applications because we're trying to contain the movement of people as well as we're trying to contain the gathering of workers who are not classified as essential services. Uh, as I said, we proactively and reactively revoke, I've mentioned that. 
And we also support the South African Police Service and the Ministry in terms of litigation. Um, I personally have done a, uh, uh, done an affidavit uh, where certain companies were challenging the essential services uh, process. Uh, it was during the course of uh, Level 5 where certain garages were also selling hot food and all the rest of it, which is part of the regulation that they were not allowed to do. They took the matter to court and the court found in favor of, of, of the national government. Uh, we as a CIPC also support that. We put up affidavits as well as documentation dealing with that. Uh, approximately 1,300 certificates and more now because the presentation is a couple of days old. It can be folks, and we do it on a, on a daily basis as to the information that we receive as well as the, the proactive measures that we've put in place. Um, this is some of the information that we also put out to the public uh, on, on CIPC's uh, thousands and thousands of followers, as well as the BIDS portal that we've got lots and lots of followers that uh, see our information there at. What we've also done, so that covers the aspect of the essential services uh, chairperson and honorable members. The other aspect that we've done as far as trying to assist in terms of COVID-19 is in the area of reckless trading. Uh, in terms of Section 22 of the Companies Act, a company trades recklessly if it's, it's, uh, if, it's, uh, if it's insolvent or illiquid. So basically, if its liability exceeds its assets or it's not able to pay its debts as they fall due, the Companies Act states that the CIPC they will uh, engage in an investigation of that particular company. They will uh, receive what is called a compliance certificate, and we will thereafter invoke the reckless trading provisions and uh, in, uh, inform the company that they are required to shut down. But because we are seeing that companies are going through liquidity issues, as we all know, it's quite widely mentioned in the media, we have decided to take a little bit of a stance in not fully enforcing the reckless trading provisions. If the company, when it states in its financial statements that it has faced these particular issues and these particular problems due to the non-trading conditions attached to COVID-19 national disaster. Uh, one of our responsibilities as a CIPC is to receive financial statements. It is a legal obligation placed on all companies. Some receive financial statements, some are what is called financial statements um, uh, uh, supplements, but we can basically see the liquidity and solvency of all companies that come through our system. Uh, we are not going to invoke reckless trading until we see the stability in terms of the COVID-19 lockdown, as well as the fact that uh, we are trying to assist companies in order to not be too draconian when it comes to the issue of them trying to recapitalize their businesses and for them to try and trade themselves out of the conditions in which they find uh, themselves currently. So that is the first part. Reckless trading has been put out. Uh, it's been widely also disseminated, not only in terms of our various um, uh, uh, social media and website pages, but also through the media. A couple of st stories and articles have been written about it, as well as professional bodies have latched onto it and have basically stated that it's a good um, uh, initiative in order for them uh, to assist. What we've also done is we've also invoked invoke what is called the DS non provisions. Um, DS non basically means that certain pieces of legislation under our, our, our acts, companies and intellectual property acts and other related laws, have certain time frames uh, attached to the lodging of documents and other areas of, of, of execution. So what we've done is that we've informed the public at large as well as professional and stakeholder bodies that we will not invoke any of those DS non provisions uh, during the lockdown and possibly even after the lockdown as companies try to consolidate their positions as well as their reporting obligations as well as their lodging obligations that are contained with the various pieces um, of, of, of legislation. Um, we do not want them to suffer any prejudice. For example, in the business rescue area, uh, um, and, uh, with chairperson and, and, and honorable members, we've seen that companies lost lodged business rescue um, applications during the course of the lockdown. We've informed those particular companies that um, they are will not be prejudiced for the fact that we could not receive them. Uh, their business rescue went into force when they lodged the application, not when we uh, 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 examined the application, and therefore they will suffer no prejudice um, when they went into the actual date and time 
of the prisoner's rescue. Prisoner's rescue has a lot of time frames attached to it. They must do certain things. They must appoint a practitioner within five days. They must have a prisoner's rescue plan and hold a meeting within 10 days. They must complete their first reporting within three months, etc., etc. There's a lot of reporting. So we're saying that because we find ourselves in a position where certain stakeholders cannot meet during, the, uh, during this particular time because of restrictions on movement, we will thereafter not be too draconian when it comes to the issue of them and their reporting timelines in terms of prisoner's rescue. But uh, we will allow them to to to, uh, to lodge, and we will place them in rescue as we go along. Uh, to date, we've seen approximately just over 140 companies go into business rescue. But I must say that this is from for the for the financials here. We are seeing a bit of an uptick. Uh, an uptake as far as business rescue applications are concerned during March and April, during um, the, the first phases of level five and level four lockdowns, 37 companies went in. And some of them, as we've seen in the news, have been fairly large ones. We've had Edcon go in, South African Express go in, we saw Comair go in, uh, Pumalele Gaming go in, many other companies. But it's across the board. We have, we have smaller companies and larger companies that are facing the particular crisis. And we have put additional staff and additional measures in place within the CIPC to deal with the increase in volumes and also to deal with the issue of how do we examine the applications quickly because we need them obviously to deal with the timelines as well as um, the requirements as far as, as business issue uh, is concerned. So uh, DS non uh, is, is, is what we try to assist and therefore we looked at how directors and shareholders Additional time frames have been placed on them, and therefore how they can trade themselves out of the situation in which they find uh, themselves. Uh, just to state that CIPC resumed its services, it's not like we ever stopped our services. As you know, uh, Chairperson and Honorable Members, CIPC is quite an automated organization. Uh, we pride ourselves on being quite innovative. We could not open all our services during the, the, the first phase of lockdown because some of it requires back in uh, examination. For example, names require that. Uh, staff had no access to the particular system, so we had limited uh, capacity during the first level five lockdown. But what we've done is that uh, we've since started opening up our services. Uh, the staff, uh, uh, one third of the staff are, are, are being brought online in the office, but we also have a very robust work from home program. Uh, we've managed to um, uh, procure additional infrastructure in a very short space of time. It took us about a week. We had to battle throughout the country because everybody's looking for work, for work from home infrastructure and IT infrastructure. We, we managed to get some for our staff. Um, we, as, we, as I'm speaking now, there's a currently a meeting going on where we allocating uh, equipment to staff as well as data bundles and access what is called VPN, virtual private networks, in terms of them able to process from home and get our mm -hmm. services up to speed. All CIPC services, as I said, from now is up and running. We do not have any service that is not up and running. We uh, manage to uh, uh, do it on a basis of trying to bring it all up in a short space of time. But we have put out notices to the public to inform them that our service delivery standard in terms of our turnarounds and our timeframes might be affected as we go through this, uh, this, this change. Also, we've ensured our staff that... Uh, we, we've assured our staff that our offices are, are set. Uh, sorry, Chairperson, I can hear some talk. Yeah, there, there's someone who's talking. Uh, check, uh, uh, the, just mute the person. Sorry, Commissioner, I'm sure I can, I can hear there's a background talk. Proceed, oh, Commissioner. Check. Okay. Okay. I've Okay, what, what we've also done, uh, Chairperson and Honorable Members, is we ensured our staff that we meet all the safety regulations as put out by the department, uh, the, by the DPSA. Our building has been sanitized twice. Uh, it will also be sanitized every two weeks. We have, um, our staff have all been given uh, protective gear. They've, they've all received their mask. As we come into the building, we have a nurse who deals with the issue of taking temperatures. Uh, we have uh, sanitizing equipment uh, throughout the building. We also are procuring sanitizing boots uh, so that when staff walk through, they get the spraying that we've seen all over being advertised. We're procuring those um, and we're making sure that our building remains safe and sanitized. I've had many meetings with organized labor and management and staff to inform them and to assure them that their safety is paramount during this time. But we will ensure that our services remain open to the public because we are, as public servants, required to assist during this pandemic. So our services are up and running, and basically we can utilize that particular area. Um, 
I think I've mentioned some of these already in terms of our resumption of our services. We have a work from home program with the necessary infrastructure. We only have between 30 and 40 percent of the building at any one time. We have very, very strict um, uh, recording of that. Uh, we have robust communication plans. We go out and speak. Uh, just after this, I'll be speaking on ENCA on business rescue. Yesterday, I was on SIPC, and my staff are continuously speaking about what is being occurring, what is being done by CIPC, and how do we continuously and robustly communicate what is happening. As I said, we supplied all the information and, and all the PPEs, and we have risk plans. Uh, if anybody has pre-existing conditions, they're not allowed to be in the CIPC. If you have COVID-19 epidemic illnesses, we we make sure that we deal with that, and we are following the regulations uh, uh, fully. Um, some of the future planning is that uh, we think that this is an opportunity to, to fundamentally change our operating model as a CIPC. I believe that some staff will remain working from home, even when it's clear to do so. We firmly believe that, as the president stated, that uh, COVID-19 will be with us for a very, very long time. So we cannot stop our services. We have to model and, 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 and change it and, and, and give us an opportunity to do so. Automation has always been at the heart of our delivery. So we, we, we're just plugging into what we already envisage and what we were on in terms of, of the processing and the application that we were currently existing. So we work from home. Uh, we're also looking at early retirement sessions. We have a session on Friday at the bargaining, bargaining forwarding uh, with, with uh, organized labor. We've got, almost, we've got just over 50 staff members that, uh, that, that, that can apply for, for early retirement. It's a, it's a voluntary basis, but we were able to deal with uh, them in terms of information sessions and telling them exactly what it is. Um, we're also looking at, uh, as I mentioned in the committee previously, chairperson and honorable members, we also will look at how do we deal with the IP treaties going forward. I mentioned the assistance that we require from the committee as far as this is concerned. I do know that other aspects have overlooked what it is, but uh, we will make sure that we keep our finger on the pulse, as it were. We're also looking at full function mobility applications and, 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 and other areas. Uh, I think that's it from me in a nutshell, person, honorable members, in terms of what we've done and also what we are doing as an organization in trying to assist and also making sure that our services are up and running. Thank you very much, chairperson, and honorable members, for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for the presentation. Can I actually then uh, revert back to honorable members? Um, for questions for clarity and or comments, uh, can I actually invite the committee members to speak to that? Uh, can I ask Secretary then to help uh, guide on those who actually uh, indicate that they would like to comment sure. in asking questions or clarity? Um, Secretary? Chair, we have three members thus far, Mr. Cuthbert followed by Mr. Mbuyani, by Mr. Mulder, and Mr. Thring. Okay. Can we proceed in that order, honorable members? Cardbet? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, I just want to ask a question uh, that was raised, or shall I say to a point that was raised in the presentation regarding the registration of sole proprietors not being in the CRPC's mandate. Now, <clears throat> I respect that, Chair. But I'd just like to know, maybe the Commissioner could inform us what discussions have taken place and maybe a little bit more detail regarding that. Because what I would like to possibly suggest is that for sole proprietorships and the like, could we not possibly register this against people's ID numbers and other personal particulars that may be used as a fail-safe considering the times, Chairperson? Um, I, I think that would just be able to assist us to inform our constituents, because if we don't receive this question every second day, um, then, you know, it's not a lot. Uh, so I'd just like to ask if we could please get some clarity on that. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Mr. Mumbayani, Chair. Mumbayani. Chair President, thank you very much and good morning. morning. Yeah, mine is just uh, uh, a quick one, Chair. Uh, that is the second question around the expedited uh, uh, competition tribunal. I just want to check in terms of the rules for the COVID. What is it that they, they've done in terms of the reckless lending and also the reckless trading currently? And also in terms of the National Credit Act, I just wanted to check in terms of the credit guarantee scheme and also the, the, the food security in terms of the additional uh, I think that will be uh, one. Maybe the last one, Chair. Sorry. Uh, uh, can I just check? Commissioner, can you hear the, the member? 
No, no, no. Uh, Chairperson, I bet as soon as I ended and you went to questions, my system froze. I didn't. Hear, I haven't heard a single question as yet. I've only managed to reboot it and come back. Okay. So, so Jay, we need to start from the from the beginning again, Jay. Please, please, please. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear. I didn't hear a single question. Yeah. No. Let's do that then, uh, uh, Andre. Let's take. Uh, sorry, we'll take this first one. Mr. Cut this again, Chair. Cut that, please. And then, Muyane, when we get to you, maybe you can actually uh, 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 close the video. They say when you close the video, it improves the, 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 the voice. Quality of the sound. Yeah. And uh, can I just then ask Cuthbert, sorry for that. Uh, Honorable Thank Cuthbert. You. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Chair, just in light of the presentation, <laughs> there was a point mentioned by Commissioner Vola that said that uh, sole proprietorships, uh, other forms of businesses, are not within the mandate of the CRPC. Now, I respect that, Chair. However, I'd like to be informed of what the discussions have been between um, themselves and the Ministry of Small Business Development, and also whether or not there's a possibility of using ID numbers and possibly other personal particulars to reference, um, or shall I, and possibly even tax returns, Chair, and tax numbers to reference uh, people in order to be able to allow them to trade, because this is something that our constituents continuously raise with us. And I think, you know, we'd like to get clarity so that we're able to report back to our constituents in this regard. Thank you, mm -hmm. Chairperson. Okay. Thank you, Ms. K Honorable Cartman. Um, Chairperson Mubayani? Yes. Yeah, Chair, thank you very much. I think I'm audible enough now. Uh, mine is uh, a little seeking question around the... Yeah, yeah just, the just close your... Uh, uh, Honorable Mubayani, just close your, your video. Because they say it does assist in terms of uh, audibility. Okay, go ahead. Let's hear. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I think I wanted just to have a clear discussion around the expedited competition tribunal in terms of the rules and the COVID 19. Uh, can we prove what is it that is there? Uh, any tribunal? Uh, uh, issues that in terms of the reckless lending and also the trading. Then the second one will be the credit guarantee scheme, Chaperson. Just want to check in terms of the national security, uh, where are we and uh, how are we moving, Chaperson. Uh, maybe the last one will be on the issues of uh, uh, the 2000. Uh, the 270,000 companies applied for essential services now. I may verify, you know that these are essential services or they just apply to, as the process is uh, alluded to. Uh, I think also the two media statements, if you can be clarify, what is it that in terms of the application criteria, the media statements, uh, what is contained in those media statements is talking about. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay. And the next member, Secretary? Chairperson, Mr. Mulder, Chair. Mr. Mulder? Honourable Mulder. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, Commissioner. Um, I, may I just say that uh, it's been pleasant to listen to the Commissioner. He, he, he uh, made his presentation in such a light-hearted manner that one almost must think that it must have been a pleasant, pleasant experience. But um, what I want to ask is, when we... Suppose we move from level four to level three, for instance. Would it be therefore necessary for all these companies to reapply for new certificates with uh, additional wording again? And then in, in specific areas where, where we might move back to level five again, should companies apply for, for new certificates with additional wording again? And would the CIPC be ready for that? Thank you, Chair. Okay. Well, thank you, Ms. Honorable Mulder. The next Chair, member, Mr. Thring, Chair. Uh, Honorable Thring. Uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, I just have two questions. Um, the, the first question is, what is the percentage of the total number of companies uh, on the database of CIPC uh, that have applied for and received essential service status? That will give us an idea as to uh, how many other companies may still be struggling um, and perhaps have not been able to access uh, the BIS portals um, and perhaps we need to ramp up 
uh, our media strategy. The second question is on page or slide 6.4. Uh, the commissioner indicated it is the company's responsibility to ensure that they meet the designation of being an essential service. Um, now, some companies, when they have received their essential service status, um, believe that they have complied and there has been conflict with SAPs. And we've been receiving, the ACDP has been receiving um, complaints from companies where SAPs have, have come and actually closed them down because they say they have not complied. So my question is, what is the CIPC actually looking at doing to assist companies to comply? So it's one thing saying to them, it's your responsibility to ensure that you comply, but companies may not be fully aware of all of the minute details. So what has been done to ensure, to point companies, you are in this particular uh, sector of business, so now make sure that you do, or go to this particular uh, portal where you are able to get further advice to make sure that you comply 100%. Thank you, Jim. Okay, can we check is that? Yes, Mrs. Sir. Hermans, Mrs. Hermans, Mrs. Hermans, Honorable Hermans. Yes, Chair, thank you very much. Um, I see that um, Advocate Waller told us that uh, CIPC applied the DS non as, uh, as from or declared as from the 24th of March to the 4th of May. And he did say, mention something, uh, lockdown period and beyond. So if that is their declaration, which has passed already, are they extending that and until when? And I just want to ask, I mean, these are obviously businesses that are in trouble. So are we linking them to remedial uh, um, support? Uh, besides the uh, administrative support CIPC gives them. Thank you, Chair. Okay. And Chair, uh, Ms. Mantashe. Honorable Mantashe. Honorable Mantashe. Can you check the muting, Honorable Mantashe? I think. Mantel, muted or unmuted? Oh, okay, is there somebody else? Ms. Muatse, Chair. Ms. Muatse. Okay, let's try Muatse. Muatse. Yeah, okay. thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Muatse. Okay. I just want to get an update on the issue of online application for businesses. And how will this be rolled out for rural-based uh, businesses? Thank you. OK. Mm -hmm. We're still checking, Mantashe? Yeah, Ms. Mantashe. Chair. We can yes. hear Ms. Mantashe. Mantashe. Can you hear me? Yes. I, I have only one question, Chair. Um, I appreciate the work done by the CIPC so far and the, the short term they've been given to respond and assist the COVID-19. Uh, I just want to check their communication. On which platforms is it done? I'm worried about those uh, businesses that are in the rural areas, whether they are able to receive the awarenesses, the awareness campaign that they run, and the criteria that is used for a business to be declared an essential service. Because our access to network is not equal in all provinces. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Are there any other hands? I didn't see. Uh, no, Mr. Chair. There's yes. no other hands, Chair. We can proceed to okay. the Let me just say that, uh, uh, Commissioner, I'm sure you picked up the questions that were raised. And maybe as yes. just a comment, uh, uh, Commissioner, that the, yes. the, the, the companies that applied are 440,000. And uh, one does think the information or what we have as data 
uh, of these applying companies might actually be quite useful to be able to actually have a level of how we link up with the different parts of the different sector. Municipalities have got some uh, role they play, small business, as you have said. I think it might be important just to see how we use this very useful information you have on your records of those who applied to go back and strengthen how we actually hold people accountable or maybe even check status in a way that we are actually going to be able to build that relationship of those companies and the businesses they do. I'm just saying in passing, I thought that might be quite important because that information of those who apply should be seen as that that can be usefully uh, transmitted. Can I take you then, uh, Commissioner, to take comments and reply to questions? The, thank, thank you much, very much, Chairperson, honourable members. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Uh, I, I want to start with the last point that you've made, um, uh, Chairperson, which is extremely valuable. Uh, just yesterday, I had a meeting with my team to talk about how do we slice and dice the essential services data, because it's an extremely valuable, uh, valuable database that we've now built up. The ministry themselves have contacted us. As I said, we, we pass through the information on a daily basis. And I know for a fact that Minister Patel is looking at the information through his various teams to ascertain where companies are functioning, what is the economic activity in various provinces, because we also gather that information. We know which companies have applied in which provinces, and we know exactly what type of companies are, are currently working in those particular areas during the various um, level uh, of lockdown. So you 100% uh, chairperson, we certainly will be looking at it. We put a project together even yesterday. I've spoken to my data team in order for us to package the data, to scrutinize the data, research the data, and to make the data available to various sources, provincial, local, academics, and the like, in order for them to look at that. So uh, we are on exactly the same mind. Uh, I'll let me answer a couple of the questions. The first question was by the Honorable Cutbert. Uh, this is a bit, of, a bit of a difficult one. The issue is that I certainly agree that sole proprietors need an avenue in order for them to be assisted as far as this is concerned. I believe that the lines at the municipal offices where they are getting um, the 113B applications to be stamped is, is very, very long. It takes a bit of time in order for them to get that. And as I said earlier, I firmly believe that other mechanisms can be utilized and used in order to try and assist them. The one is that, as I said, um, I see that the Gauteng government has now got a portal in order for them to do that. But there have to be strict verification measures put in place. The reason why we have the BIS portal, which cross-references against the database of registry, is because then we can link it back directly to people, we can link it back directly to a registered entity, and the legal obligations that go with a company is therefore tied to them applying for an essential services certificate. That is the reason why I think that uh, the BIS portal was used, and therefore it is linked to the registry, because we have the loop and the tie back in order to hold responsibility. Also, I also think that um, because sole proprietors aren't registered anyway, many of them apply for tax registration numbers. I think we can also utilize the tax database by SARS in order to, to use that as a particular mechanism to verify that. Because the tax database, when sole proprietors use that, information is supplied to SARS and information is then recorded to be truthful uh, and, and obviously verified through the SARS mechanisms, and therefore we can leverage of that in order to uh, uh, in order to create or develop a system for, for sole proprietors. So I firmly believe uh, that it can be created. I also believe that um, uh, what Honorable Cutbutt has said is that we need to find a better way of doing it in terms of the receiving of the personal information and therefore to also access through. What we've also done is that we are in discussions with the Ministry of Small Business. Uh, the discussions have started before uh, the lockdown, but have now continued also in Zoom meetings uh, because they want to leverage of our systems in order to develop a small business category, sole proprietor category, an informal sector category, and basically to get that information into the loop in terms of how do they verify them and how do they supply them with information and application. Um, uh, uh, Honorable Mbuyani, 
Um, the first part, I think you spoke about the issue of, of reckless trading, and I think I clarified that, is that we will not be too harsh on those entities. Um, we will look at the information supplied to us through the annual financial statements and other data that we receive, and basically try to analyze that if the liquidity and solvency issues is caused by COVID-19, and we will request specific um, uh, disclaimers on that, that the suppliers with the information related to that, we will then be in a better position in order to ascertain whether it is certainly related to that or not. But as to the, uh, the, the, the media statements, I'm certainly sure that we can supply the committee with those statements. Uh, we work closely with the, with the com committee secretary. Um, I know that um, uh, the spokesperson or the minister has those particular statements. I was privy to them before they were released, and we will certainly supply the, the the committee with those particular media statements as put out by the minister. Um, to the Honorable Mulder, uh, no, companies will not reapply. The only time, and it, was, it wasn't, it, there's never been a, re, a reapplication process. I think that was, that was a, a misnomer when it was stated originally when we changed the, uh, the, uh, the wording of the certificates, because companies just received them. We programmatically in the back end of the CIPC changed the wording, and sent out that particular new certificate to all the companies. They never had to reapply for those particular certificates. It took us about three days to clear the backlog at that particular moment in time. I see there were thousands and thousands of these certificates, but we managed to clear that, and we now used updated wording going forward. So if, when we went from level five to level four, level five companies that were already had received certificates did not have to reapply to go down to the next level. So automatically, it will not work the other way. So if we go from level four to level five, God forbid that we do, they will not reapply because they will have those certificates and those certificates will speak directly to the, the regulations as to the companies and the industries and the categories that are allowed to remain open uh, in, in terms of that. So there will be no reapplication. There will not be any form of bureaucracy placed on companies to reapply, and therefore we will press programmatically it as we update the system and move the system between the various levels. If more categories open under level four, from level four to level three, we will just add those categories to the first portal. Those companies will be able to apply, but level five companies and level four companies will have no reapplication process. Uh, to the honorable thing, uh, the percentage that we've seen now of the 440 companies, 40,000 companies, is approximately one third of the company registration database. It's about one third. Uh, of active companies that are currently. Um, just to put your mind at ease, is that there is no issue of a company not getting. The BIS portal is, as I said, a fully automated system. It is an instantaneous system. We do see companies making errors. They, some of them don't know what their registration number is. They mix up the numbers. Um, they don't know what type of company or their CC or their non-profits, et cetera. We see that type of thing happening. But we've got a lot of mechanisms, as I said, in place. We've got dedicated teams that when they look for assistance, we, we, we give it over the various query resolution mechanisms within the CIPC. And the BIS portal system is fully utilized. It's an immediate system within minutes. A company will get a certificate and be able to trade uh, and receive the certificate as per, as, uh, as per that. Uh, regarding the issue about um, companies being stopped and uh, companies stating that they have the CIPC certificate, this speaks directly to what the media statement that was put out by the minister said. The minister clearly stated that what the certificates are being used for is to keep a record of companies that are using essential services designations and categories in order to open up and to trade. He said that it is not used as a permit. It's not a permit to trade. It basically is a record to say that, look, I have met the criteria for essential services. I am a registered company. I have legal obligations placed on me as per the Companies Act. And therefore, under the regulations that go from the various levels, I am a company that is allowed to trade under as an essential service. But it is not a permit. It's not a, it's not a license to trade. And that's clearly what, the, what you will see from the media statements that have been put out by the minister that he, that he, that he categorically stated. But also, um, on the thing, what we've also seen and what we've been told and what we've been and by the ministry is that the CIPC stick to your place. Your place is to administer a system. It is not your duty to provide any form of advice. 
I do understand because I receive this on a daily basis. It is seen that the CIPC is now become the authority on essential services. I see this everywhere. We get tons and tons of questions. We get tons and tons of queries based on this. And the ministry has said, do not advise. Go back to Cocter. We've got the information for Cocter in terms of, of, of our uh, resolution mechanisms and our teams that work on it. We, we, we pass them along to the ministry. The ministry of DTI has also stated that they play a bit of a role as far as this is concerned in advising companies because we do not have the, the expertise or, 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 or the real know-how to advise which category is essential and which category is not. We're using of an automated system and they're using our development teams in order for us to collate and get that information into the system. Um, uh, uh, Honorable Hermans, uh, uh, yes, uh, as far as the extending of the DS non is concerned, we're currently in discussions, and I'm in discussions with my legal, my legal team within the CIPC. We probably will look at it going to June uh, because there is still a fair amount of companies that are locked down in terms of level four, and therefore we obviously have to deal with how do we, uh, how do we assist them uh, in, in terms of that. Um, uh, Honorable Mwache, I didn't quite get the question, but I think it was something to do with about airlines and and what do, what is happening with airlines. Well, well, currently we've seen. I think this is also widely uh, uh, widely communicated in the media. We've seen three companies go into uh, into business rescue: South African Airways, South African Express, and Comair. Just has, has gone into business rescue. Out of those three, one has gone into liquidation. One has gone into provisional liquidation, which is South African Express Airlines. The business rescue practitioners um, uh, informed us at the CIPC that there is, they see that there is no hope for saving of the airline, and therefore uh, they have made an application to court, and um, uh, the provisional liquidation of South African Express was granted, I think possibly about two weeks ago, somewhere there. The others are, are, are still in rescue, as we can see, um, and as I said, Kwame is new. They just went into rescue in the last couple of days. Um, um, uh, uh, Honourable Mantash, uh, uh, thank you very much for those words. Um, yes, we, we try and communicate on every single one of our platforms, um, but I do understand that the problem that we have. We do have some areas which are difficult to, 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 to access our systems in terms of internet and Facebook and Twitter and social media accounts. So what we're also starting, and I just had a meeting, especially enough you mentioned this, I had a meeting yesterday with my education and awareness team to deal with other ways that we will now communicate and other ways that we will educate. We're going to use various mechanisms. And the one that we're going to use is that we're going to be, going to be using a lot of provincial and local radio stations. Hopefully that helps. I'm not sure, but we're going to we, we're going to request time on, on, on local radio stations in various areas and various provinces in order for us to have slots to deal with the issues around essential certificates, CIPC services, the issues around the lockdown and the various categories. And we've devised a program as of yesterday and certain topics have been put into that particular um, uh, particular program. We've always had a good relationship with the Economic Development Provincial um, uh, Authorities and we also will be in contact with them as to what program they have and how we can piggyback off them and assist them as far as that is concerned. Um, I think I've answered all the questions. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I've missed any. If I have, please, uh, I apologize. Okay. Can, can we then actually agree? I thought maybe what would be helpful, because this is our first presentation, there, there will be opportunities to actually follow through, particularly on the part of what you're doing and the numbers that are growing up, you know, going up quickly. And I think on the base of that, we will really would like to know how useful is the data and how mm. do we actually account and ensure alignment? Because for each one that works with you, you should be able to create the capacity to be able to balance. Mm. Can I check if ever there are any further comments or questions from honorable members, uh, uh, sure. Andre? Mr. Mbuyani wants to raise another question, Chair. Okay. Mbuyani, watch your video. Uh, you, it, was, it came out quite okay when you spoke without the video. Floor is yours, uh, Mbuyani. As follow-up question. Honorable Mbuyani. Yes, Chair. I think the uh, third second question revolves around the risk as just said reopening in babies. So I just wanted to check as to, in terms of the risk, what is it that is adjusted in terms of the risk? And uh, which businesses are they looking for the level for reopening 
uh, while we were mitigating and they were curving and at least they flattened. Okay. Um, Buyane, Buyane, the flat. Okay. Buyane, Buyane, the commissioner is saying I, that he's he's struggling to I hear. Yeah. 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 Just, just check again your gadget and then he's saying that he can't hear you. I see him. I, I can't hear. I, sorry, but I thought I heard something about restructuring. Well, you're talking about risk, but can we just check, um, Buyan, um, if you can try again, just slowly, um, yeah. just to repeat the point, uh, Commissioner? I'll try. Okay, Buyan. Okay, Chairperson, thank you. I just wanted to check in terms of clarity, the risk adjusted uh, reopening program. Because we're told that this... Uh, the risk adjusted reopening program will be in phases. Well, what is it that we're looking for, and which businesses or companies that uh, will be adjusted in terms of the uh, in terms of the opening? Thank you, Chairperson. Risk adjusted. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chair. I'm sure you had that. Chairperson. And then uh, Andre. Mr. Thring also want to clarify a question. Okay. Honourable Thring, follow up. Uh, Chair, thank. Uh, Chair, thank you. Um, I must say that I think the, today the sound is very um, poor and I'm, I'm really struggling to mm. hear. I did get the mm. answer for my, the first question, um, but if the commissioner, just for the sake of time, Chair, if, if the commissioner could uh, put his answer in writing to me uh, for my second question with regards to um, companies ensuring that they meet the designation of being an essential service. Uh, because I, I've I heard that. honestly couldn't hear, I honestly couldn't hear his his response. Okay, I will do Can that. Actually, yeah. uh, Commissioner, will allow you just to speak back again. Maybe you will be able to go through to uh, three more audibly, and uh, the follow up question of Muyan. You can speak to those, uh, Commissioner. Oh. Thank you very much, Chairperson and members. Uh, uh, please uh, bear with me. I I think that uh, the Honourable Biyani is asking about. The adjusted reopening program for the CIPC. Am, am, am I right in that? Because I could not hear it properly, but I heard certain certain parts of it. Okay. Uh, Honorable Mbiani, are you are you speaking about that? Mbiani. Chair, I heard him speaking about companies. Companies reopening. Oh, companies yes, reopening. Yes, yes. Okay, I, I, I'm with you. All right. Uh, remember that we only deal with the aspect of the adjusted reopening as per the regulations that are put out. The regulations spell out which categories and which industries are allowed to open during the various phases of, 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 of lockdown. So, for example, uh, you saw the aspect of... Um, uh, uh, food, food services. Food services were purely locked down under level five. They opened up. We added that particular category into the level four certificate. So companies uh, and food industries, for example, takeaways and, and McDonald's and all of the rest of it, they were then added to the, to the portal in an adjusted fashion so that they can open as the categories and the levels change accordingly. As to their adjustment as to bringing in certain amounts of their staffing, I understand that part. I think that the, the regulation states that you must start off for 30% and ramp up to 50% based if you meet the safety regulations. That is not controlled by the CIPC. That is controlled by centralized cocktail, uh, cocktail processes. And they need to ensure, as well as the company needs to ensure, that when the, um, uh, uh, the, the SAPs do uh, the... Uh, 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 the visits and, 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 and all of that, that they have to meet that. Uh, the CIPC is not going to involved in, we only get involved in the reopening of the various categories so that they can trade during the, uh, uh, during the, the, the lockdown periods. Uh, on, honorable thing, yes, I'm, we, we can certainly put our answer in writing. I think it was to deal with the issue of the responsibility as well as the advice that is given to companies when they apply for the essential services certificate and what, uh, what, um, when they get the certificate, what is the obligation placed? And can they utilize that? I certainly can put that in writing and I can send it off to the Okay. Uh, can we then actually uh, proceed, uh, Secretary? I'm sure we, we actually did have uh, comments, questions for clarity and responses from the Commissioner. 
let's say we, we're actually doing this part of engagement the first time with the CIPC, we may actually find opportunities in terms of uh, following through on progress. Uh, can we then uh, try and conclude on your presentation? And thank you very much, Commissioner, for, for thank coming you very much. and your team. And uh, I think for the members, I'm sure we can be able to, uh, I'm sure for three with the request, uh, uh, Commissioner, of that written response on the question, so that we can be able to make a follow-up. Can we conclude uh, your, your presentation by thanking you for making time to <coughs> engage the committee? Uh, we would actually ask that then you can actually proceed with the rest of the other business. There may be more applications coming that you may have to look at. So at this stage, <laughs> we would like to appreciate your uh, support. And uh, can we then proceed to the next presentation? And thanks very much, Commissioner. Maybe you can Thank have you very much. Remarks. Are there any issues you'd like to say last? And then we can move to the next presentation. No, no, thank you very much for the opportunity, Chairperson and members. And as I said, my, my doors and my emails are always open to members. I know some of you contact me uh, individually for matters you might have with your constituency. We are always uh, available to assist, and uh, we certainly will continue to do so. So thank you very much for the opportunity. I will continue to keep the committee posted on what we are doing. It is trying times, uh, I must admit, uh, trying to get everybody up and engaged in the organization to try and get our services up to speed. It certainly it takes up a lot of my time. Uh, essential services is, is has now been thrust on us as an organization, and we certainly will meet that task. But thank you very much for the opportunity, and uh, I will, will continue to engage. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, can we then take the next presentation from the NCR? Uh, I'm sure we can actually get the secretary to indicate the team from the NCR and um, be able to actually get that as the next presentation circulated to members. Secretary? Um, Chair, the NCR will be led by the CEO, Ms. Nomsa Mochigari, the deputy CEO, Mr. Tongwane, and the company secretary, Mr. Mashapa. Um, we're just asking them to set up and, and, and link up with the committee. They have been there the, since this morning, Chairperson. So they've listened into this discussion. Okay. Al allow me to welcome then the CEO. Uh, can you actually then show the presentation? And then can you, with the CEO, with the team, uh, welcome. Uh, the floor is yours. CEO. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson, and uh, good morning. Good morning to all the Honorable Members. Uh, my name is Nom Samutsihare. Um, I will be making a presentation this morning, and uh, the presentation covers these three parts. The NCR's initiatives in response to COVID-19, advice provided by NCR to monitoring post the lockdown. Now, in terms of the initiatives uh, in response to COVID-19, um, we provided advice to, um, we issued a circular rather, to uh, credit providers and, uh, and debt counselors and credit bureaus uh, to give them more time to submit statutory reports because within this period of lockdown, it was going to be very, it was going to be impossible for them to do that. Uh, most of these statutory reports are due on the 15th of May, and uh, a lot of these registrants are closed down. They're not operating, so we've given them until after the lockdown to submit such statutory documentation to the NCR. Um, we also. Uh, looked at providing relief to registrants in terms of payment of their registration fees to the NCR. Now, these registration fees are normally payable by uh, July, um, were supposed to be paid by July 2020, so they're paid every year. Now, we have submitted a proposal to the DTI to waive registration fees, especially for the very small credit providers and debt counselors but give uh, the other registrants uh, time to pay their registration fees. We have proposed a period of six months, with six months within which these registrants can pay their registration fees. 
Now, this obviously will have, you know, some impact on our budget, but we believe that we can still, you know, um, be able to survive as the NCR to continue to deliver on our mandate um, because there's been delayed, for instance, in filling of positions and there are some activities that we will not be able to do for some time, such as going out to various provinces to conduct consumer education initiatives and conducting you know, compliance checks. We'll have to find other ways of performing those functions uh, because, of that, because of the pandemic. Now, in the next slide, uh, this is where we provided advice uh, to various stakeholders, but we also collaborated uh, with key stakeholders in the industry. We provided advice to credit providers, to the department, to the South African Reserve Bank, the National Treasury, the South African Future Trust, uh, in terms of providing relief to consumers and, and SMMEs during this period. We know that a lot of SMMEs will not be able, able to generate you know, any income. And therefore, the Reserve Bank and National Treasury were looking at a loan guarantee scheme for SMMEs with an annual take turnover of up to 300 million. This relief, these relief loans um, will apply in terms of the, uh, 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 the National Credit Act. Only 30%, so about 30% of these SMMEs would fall in within the National Credit Act because the Act only protects con uh, SMMEs who are consumers and have an annual turnover of up to a million. Beyond a million, those businesses, we believe they can appoint their own lawyers and fight their own cases. But in as far as the Act is concerned, uh, the question that was being raised by the Reserve Bank and National Treasury was around whether they should apply, whether they should use emergency loans or Section 11, uh, uh, Section 11 provisions of the Act, which is about packaging. And that would be appropriate mechanism would be to use them because in terms of the emergency loans, affordability assessments are not required, and the emergency loans and sorry, Section 11. Uh, provisions which uh, apply to public interest credit agreements. Um, that section can only be activated in instances where there are circumstances that are outside of the provision of the emergency loan mechanism. We also provided advice to the South African Future Trust, which is uh, the, Open, the Oppenheimer Foundation. Um, they wanted to understand our registration requirements to provide relief to SMMEs. Uh, there's a, a, about one billion that was going to be that is being used to fund loans to SMMEs, and this facility is being administered by the banks. But the loans would go to the SMMEs. However, the money would be paid directly to the employees of the SMMEs. Now. These loans are going to be payable by the SMEs uh, after a period over a period of 15, 15 weeks. Uh, however, there's no interest that is going to be charged. And therefore, our advice was that since there was no interest that was going to be charged, they are not required to be registered with the National Credit Regulator. We are also collaborating with the Reserve Bank to allow them to access consumer and corporate credit data from the credit bureaus and, the, and from the uh, data hub. Uh, we are currently in the process of entering into a memorandum of agreement with, with, the, with the Reserve Bank and the Credit Bureau Association and another entity called uh, NUM ESCRA, which is the South African credit risk reporting as um, so we are in that in that process the reserve bank one one they want to be able to use this information uh, to monitor financial stability and how covid 19 you know how the you know this 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 virus the covid 19 has an impact 
on the operations of especially you know businesses so we are in the process of facilitating that process okay now in terms uh, in terms of compliance monitoring post lockdown we are looking at we will be looking at reviewing credit agreements that banks especially because they are the ones that have been operating during this time and they have provided quite a number of you know various types of debt relief to consumers we will want to investigate you know those credit agreements that they were that, that they entered into uh, to make sure that there are, any, there are no contraventions of the of the national credit act but we will also want to intensify our monitoring compliance monitoring through inspections and complaints assessments we will look at the treatment of credit information as a result of the relief that was provided by the banks during this period to make sure that consumers were not prejudiced in the process so in instances where a consumer was given a payment holiday by by by, by a bank that will be reflected on the credit bureau records one way or the other but it must be in such a way that that particular consumer is not prejudiced we will also be conducting raids and normally when we conduct raids we conduct raids jointly with the police uh, we will go to the smaller towns townships and rural areas to look at any illegal collection methods that credit providers might have uh, you know uh, uh, that the credit illegal collection methods that they may have uh, taken, such as the retention of bank cards, SASA cards, and ID books. We will also analyze the performance of loan books of credit providers to monitor the impact of COVID-19 on consumers. And we will do that by uh, using the statutory returns that credit providers will be submitting to the NCR. To continue, we will want to also focus on debt collection practices. Debt collection during this period, in terms of the regulations, is prohibited. And therefore, we will want to see exactly what happened during this period. And we will issue a circular to credit providers and credit bureaus to request them to submit monthly statistical, statistical reports, reports. Currently, they submit reports quarterly. But we want to be able to monitor the credit trends and the indebtedness of consumers during this period. And we will only be able to get these reports, you know, and be able to monitor closely if those monthly reports are submitted to the NCR. And we will embark on consumer education drives mainly on, on debt counseling because we, we know for a fact that a lot of consumers have struggled during this time. And therefore, the over indebtedness of consumers and the indebtedness of consumers is going to, you know has, has gone up and therefore we will want to be able to advise consumers who believe that they are over indebted to be able to seek the services of debt counselors but also to educate them and, and, and create awareness around credit life insurance a lot of consumers enter into credit agreements without knowing that they've also signed up for credit life insurance and sometimes when an event occurs in their lives, somebody becomes, uh, somebody is retrenched or they, or they die or they are permanently disabled. They are not able to claim because they are not aware that they can claim, you know, uh, from credit life insurance. And therefore, that is going to be part of the consumer education drive that we will, that we will embark on. I believe I have, I'm done with my present presentation, Honorable Chair, we will take questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, CEO. Can I actually then invite the honorable members to actually um, ask their questions for clarity and or comments? Honorable members? Secretary, Chairperson, can just um, I, have Mr. I have Mr. Dango, Chairperson. Okay, Dango. Uh, can you actually then say the, the first one, Honorable Dango, floor is yours. Yeah, person. 
uh, and thank you for the presentation. My question is really about micro lenders and the exorbitant interest that they would charge on loans and advances to poor people. And the methodology of collection, is this being monitored by the uh, Bureau, by the regulator? And is there regulation for that? <clears throat> is there also regulation if people are not paying in this period that they would not be charged the exorbitant interest rates that micro lenders ask for? Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Dango. Chair, Can we take that? Chair, yes. Ms. Yes. Yaku, yes. Ms. Yaku, Chairperson. Yes. Honorable Yaku. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, I would like to ask, um, I, I raised a concern the other day um, to the DTI about furniture manufacturers. And as you know, right now, furniture stores are closed. Um, so if your child is learning through um, television and your television breaks down, you are unable to replace that television because the furniture stores are closed. So I wanted to know if the NCR has engaged with um, furniture retailers and manufacturers as to how to assist because they employ about uh, maybe 20,000 employees that are affected at the moment and there's thousands of stores which might not be able to survive this COVID situation. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe they are in talks with banks as to how to help uh, um, um, and assist uh, and find a way maybe to, to bridge a gap between the furniture retailers um, and, and access to them at this moment. Um, and secondly, I wanted to ask, maybe if I heard wrong, um, the presenter spoke about 15 weeks for SMMEs to be able to pay back the loans interest free, and I was wondering if 15 weeks is enough time. I correctly, um, I would just like clarity on that. So the, the second part, Honourable Yako, is the one we are crackling a bit. If you can repeat the second part, sorry for that. I'm asking. Uh, I heard the speaker. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Yes, um, I heard the speaker mention um, 15 weeks that SMMEs will be able to pay back the loans that will be given to them interest-free. And I was wondering if I heard incorrectly, and I was wondering if I heard correctly, is 15 weeks enough time to pay back those loans in light of the fact that they would have to be re restarting basically again? Okay. Are there other Chairperson? Chairperson, Mr. Mbuyani. Mbuyani. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. I was uh, going to say that they were earning less than a million rand. When, when um, so, Mr. Dango, Mr. Dango, Mr. Dango needs to put off. Okay. Can you, can you mute Dango? <laughs> Dango is muted, Chair. Yeah, and uh, uh, Mbuyani, you're on the floor. Sorry for that. No problem. Thank you very Mbuyane. much, Chairperson. Uh, let yeah. me welcome the presentation, Chair. And also, check in terms of the lending outside normal framework in terms of the National Credit Act and also the regulator support. Mm -hmm. uh, Mbuyani, can, can, can yes. you close the, the video and then and let's try again? It's closed. Is it closed? Okay. Yeah, the video okay. is. Okay. Is it is it off? Yeah. Okay. Proceed, uh, Boyan. Is that the, you're breaking? Continue. Yeah. yeah. Sure. In terms of the National Credit Act, I just wanted to check the lending outside normal framework. Uh, are they checking what is it that is happening? And also the regulator support. Just want to check in which field. Uh, uh, the NCR has already supported because we know now when COVID-19, uh, we are supporting those people that are doing business essentially, like the healthcare, the banking sector, the retail property. I just wanted to say that. And also the, the consumer, the <laughs> consumer mission. If I can get that. Chairperson, also the last one, I think they said they conduct raids in small townships and rural areas for illegal collection uh, methods. I just want to check uh, whether they were able to go 
the rural areas and the, do they have any embark, embarkment of education, uh, consumer education drive, uh, maybe the department counseling or the life uh, insurance chairperson. Then the last one will be, can we double check whether they do have a shop that has stockpiling mm-hmm. and the, the, the question of, uh, of, of illegal raising of prices. So if you can check uh, what is it that they do in current as the NCR chapter. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, can I just check, uh, Andre, the, the, the presentation is still on the screen. Yes, we'll um, ask Ms. Machikari to, to remove it, Chair. Okay. And then, um, uh, Mr. The, who's the next one? Uh, Mr. Andre? Mulder, Chair. Uh, Honourable Mulder. Um, thank you, Chair. I've just just one got one question. Um, where the presentation refers to compliance monitor, monitoring post lockdown. At point five, it's just to find an example. Repatient because this is prohibited at this stage. Could I just have clarity on what is meant by this stage? Is, is it the post-lockdown um, stage or the stage where we are now? Uh, because at some stage, debt collecting practices would be open and be allowed again. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, can we take the next one? You- Chair, Ms. Mantashe, Chair. Uh, Honorable Mantashe. Thank you, Chairperson. I only have one question. Uh, when 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 Ms. Mtsekhara is presenting, in one, uh, somewhere in her presentation, he says they will embark on a program of raids in smaller towns and townships for illegal collection methods such as retention of bank cards, etc. And my question would be, Chair, when can we expect that program to commence? Because for me, this that that problem has been there. It doesn't start now that there's lockdown. What have they been doing? Because we've been reporting and they've been aware. Does he have the, does NCR have the capacity to send out those inspectors that would really curb the crisis? that our elderly people are having in the townships and in smaller towns. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Can we take the next one, uh, um, Secretary? Chairperson, Ms. Mr. Thring, Chair. Honorable Thring. Honorable Thring. Chair, did you say Thring? Yes, Chair. please, yes. Mr. Thring. Honorable Tring, on the Okay, floor. sorry, I'm, I'm really struggling, Chair, with the sound. Uh, so, just sorry, two questions. sorry for that. Yeah, sorry um, for that. Two yeah. questions. The the uh, first question is with regards to the Future Trust uh, Oppenheimer 1 billion fund um, to SMEs, loans to SMEs. Um, I agree. I think the, the question is really one question covered by um, Honorable Yako. Um, whether the, the two-week uh, or a few weeks repayment period is actually sufficient, um, and can this particular loan period be extended? Um, and then the question is, what would happen if a, an SME uh, defaults um, on the repayment of this loan that has been received? Uh, then secondly, Chair, uh, many ordinary citizens who are, who are renting um, in rental units, um, whether it's a municipal units or whether they are privately owned units, are actually struggling to make payments, particularly if they lost their jobs or have reduced income. Um, so what kind of respite um, is the NCR looking at offering, if any, to both tenants as well as landlords? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Thring. And we take chair, we have, yes. we have no um, further questions thus far, Chair. We can proceed with the responses. Can, can I then refer back to the CEO and the team to, to the questions and comments of members? Honorable CEO. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, in terms of uh, Honorable, I'll start with Honorable Yaku's uh, questions. 
uh, about the, you know, the TV breaking down um, and the furniture stores. And she rightly pointed out that the furniture stores are closed now, they're not operating except for their call, their, their call centers. Uh, that is an issue that uh, can be addressed by the National Consumer Commission. Uh, the National Credit Regulator only regulates credit agreements. So in instances where even, you, even if you have bought your TV, you know, you, by using a loan and it, it, it breaks down, uh, we only look at the credit agreement and the National Consumer Commission will look at uh, the TV set. So that is an issue that can be addressed by the National Consumer Commission. And uh, now the issue around uh, the South African Future Trust, which is the Oppenheimer Foundation. Um, loans are going to be given to SMMEs. However, payments are going to be made directly to their employees. These employees are going to receive weekly allowances to employees for 15 weeks. Um, and there's no interest that is going to be charged. Now, the loans are repayable on the 30, from the 31st of December 2025, just under five years. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to, to clarify that. Um, and there was also the issue around, uh, and I'll ask some of my team members, so as I look, I look through the questions that were asked to help me with some of the responses. Okay. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Uh, to the members of the committees. My name is Shadam, I'm the company secretary of the UCR. I just uh, want the, to connection, the connection is terrible. If you can just make sure that uh, um, you connect it properly, just speak again. You were crackling very, very strong. Go ahead. Hello, Chairperson, can you hear me? It's much better, yes, yes. With a bit of echo, oh. though. Mm. Yeah, I was saying my name is Siva Mashaba. The company secretary is I will respond to a few questions. The first one, Mr. Mbuyani, about the illegal raising of prices. Chair, we can't hear the speaker. Um, okay. okay. Can you ask the technical guy? There's an echo um, when you speak because it's actually like uh, it, it, there's an echo. So can technician just assist us? Uh, on that chair. yes chair yes um just 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 a question um how many uh, devices are opened in that room is there a tv that is that is that is open um or is it just one Hello. laptop that is open can you switch off other devices please okay thank you technician so can i actually then go back to ceo just just make sure that there is only one gadget that you're using that is open. I think that's the suggestion. Can we go back uh, to um, the respondent? Hi, Chairperson. Can, can you hear me now? Much better. Much better. Okay. Now, I want to respond to a few questions. I've already said good morning to the members also. Yes. They didn't hear me. Yeah. Uh, I'm responding to a few questions uh, with Mr. Boyan's question regarding the illegal raising of prices by service providers and other suppliers of services. This is not within our mandate. I think it falls under the mandate of the Competition Commission. The disaster management regulations, the lockdown regulations, currently prohibits debt collection and we, we don't know whether maybe when the government continues to apply its risk adjusted approach to reopening the economy whether at some levels it will be reopened but currently debt collection is not allowed and on illegal debt collection practices such as the retention of cards and pins we before the lockdown we in terms of our annual program, we conduct the rates on a quarterly basis. 
and also work very closely with the provincial consumer affairs offices in the nine provinces who give us tip-offs frequently and we will rate the premises of those credit providers working together with the South African police. So this issue is always that uh, Mr. Siva, you 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 going away again, Siva? Okay, you going away again? Okay, technicians, uh, if you can just check because uh, that it, uh, Mr. Siva is actually going away again. Uh, Okay. 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 Can we check? Maybe let's go back to CEO. If you can go back to CEO. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Chairperson? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. She was trying to explain that the, the illegal increases in, in prices is the responsibility of the Competition Commission. We are aware that they've been busy conducting you know, inspections uh, um, around that. Now, we were also saying that um, the, 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 in terms of the rates, this is something that we've always been doing. We can always provide information um, to, to the committee in terms of the rates that we've conducted previously. Uh, but we can, you know, we cannot conduct rates now. We can only do that, you know, after once we have been classified as a provider of essential services, then we will be able to embark on a lot of the activities that um, we, we are required to, 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 to do, the functions that we are supposed to perform. Um, and then in terms of, I could not quite understand uh, here what Honorable Mbuyane, Honorable Mbuyane's question was. And then in terms of um, micro lenders are not required to operate at this point. They are not operating. So if, if there are any micro lenders that are, that, that are operating and they are charging high interest rates, we will get to them when we conduct our raids, you know, jointly with the police. But we are aware that there are some micro lenders that have attempted to withdraw funds from consumers using their bank cards, and they were, you know, raided by the police at eight, several, you know, a few ATMs. So uh, yeah, uh, those are I think the questions that were asked. The rental units, uh, it doesn't fall within our. The rental payment doesn't fall in within our mandate. As I indicated, NCR only regulates credit agreements. Yeah, and the, the Oppenheimer loans also would not be regulated by us because they don't, they don't, they, they're, they're not going to charge interest, so they were not required to register with the NCR. And the payment, so you can yeah. Okay. I, I think I may, I think I we have uh, responded to those questions. Um, okay. Unless I, I missed some honorable chair. Okay. No, I think um, let me just say uh, check uh, with uh, members um, in terms of follow up or further chair? clarity. So I Mr. know that we're struggling a bit with the communication. Uh, Andre? Mr. Cuthbert, chair, want to do a question? Uh, honorable Cuthbert? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Chair, I'd just like to clarify a statement made by the CEO and the company secretary, just because I possibly don't understand, Chair. And that is regarding, where, because there's no debt collection allowed at this moment in time, does this mean that consumers should not necessarily repay their debts um, if they are, you know, provisionally sequestrated or provide, need to provide that money to a debt counsellor? And what about those who would like to continue paying their debts because they wouldn't want to run behind. If we could just get some clarity on that matter, Chair. Okay. Chair? Hey, Mr. Dango, followed by Ms. Mantashe. Dango and Mantashe. Honorable Dango. Honorable Dango. Uh, um, unmute, unmute, uh, um, 
because we might be actually che muted. Chairperson. Django and then uh, Mantasha. Che Chairperson, it's Cuthbert. Cuthbert. Yeah. Um, just while we're waiting for Mr. Dangle, there's just one additional point I'd like to raise, Chair, um, if I may. Um, yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, can you be brief and then... We yes, it's quick, continue. it's very quick. Thank be you, brief. Chair. Chair, I just want to know also, within the question that I asked, what is what happens in the context of loan forbearances as well as payment holidays um, regarding the repayment of debt? Surely that should bind people to, you know, being payments or not paying um, within a three-month period or six-month period, depending on what the financial services Hello. provider has granted them with. Thank okay. you, Chair. Dango is calling at the back. Dango? Mr. Dango is back, Chair. Yeah, I hear him talking at the back. Dango? Honorable Dango. Yeah, can you hear me now, Chairperson? Yes. If you can Hello. speak up. Yeah. Chairperson, just... Uh, on the question of uh, micro lenders, the interest clocks or clock or obviously carries on. Is there no way we can regulate or cap the interest clock uh, on micro lenders? Because in normal times, the the, the interest clock on uh, micro lenders are exorbitant, and I think could in fact be usurious. It borders upon that. Um, but in this particular p point in time, uh, can uh, there not be a regulation to curb that interest clock from rising too much. Thank you very much. Okay. Chair, Ms. Mantashe? Mantashe. Thank you, Chairperson. I, 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 I don't think I am full with the response from the NCR. Yes, I know they can't go now because there's lockdown, but I'll be satisfied because this is i have passion with this matter because it affects the poorest can they in their time submit to the committee a list of provinces they have gone to and what they did find in those provinces in as far as this habit of cards of poor people being confiscated by 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 loan sharks where did they do the rates? What were the results in which provinces and in which companies? Because in my consequences, I've never seen them. I've never seen the inspectors getting there, neither in my town where I live, Jay. Can they submit to this committee the, the report of the, pro, of the work they've done in the past, not now under lockdown? Because this is not starting now. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Andre, do you have any... Chair, no uh, further follow-up questions, Chair. Can, can I ask a uh, CEO? Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and thank you for those questions. Um, in terms of debt collection, when we say that debt collection is not permitted during this period, consumers are still expected um, to continue to pay any loans that they have, you know, where they can. Because remember, there are those uh, consumers who might be out of a job now, um, and they may be struggling to pay back, you know, the loans that they have. But they are expected to pay back. Now, we are referring to, you know, instances where somebody's car has been repossessed because, you know, they have failed to honor their financial obligations. Those kinds of practices are not allowed during the lockdown. Um, now, in terms of uh, payment holidays, uh, we are meeting with the, uh, with the uh, Credit Bureau Association uh, this week to look at what impact uh, credit information is going to have on consumers that have been affected by COVID and those consumers who we can't hear from you. Your, your, your line is going. And your line is going. As I indicated, we want, want to make sure that. Uh, CEO, CEO your, li your line is. Yeah, definitely. Uh, CEO, your line is going. Those who were given payment yeah. holidays. We don't okay. want that information. Uh, can, can you hear me? Can you hear okay. me now? No, we, we actually don't hear you properly, CEO, because your 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 line 
it's moving away from us. Can I then maybe just do this, uh, because it looks like we're sort of struggling at this point. CEO, the, the questions that were sent, were, were actually asked, I'm sure you're able to pick up on most of them as we have actually asked the questions. Can we really ask them uh, through our secretariat that uh, can you respond to them in writing? Because the, the communication is not good. It's getting worse. Uh, I thought it might be better with time. So if we can actually agree of uh, secretary to follow through on reaching yes, responses sir. to the Chief questions it. that you've got. Uh, can I actually maybe get uh, to CEO and just to say, uh, we, we are hoping that we can actually get those questions. She's got uh, most of them and uh, we can be able to get uh, them back in writing. Uh, Andre, if you wanted to Chief. make a suggestion. Chair, Mr. Cuthbert wanted to, 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 to in, in, say something, Chair. Uh, Cuthbert? Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, Chair, I'm happy to agree to having answers in writing, but can we please have a fixed deadline for when they will be sent through to the committee? Um, Andre? Chair, we can, the committee can propose maybe in, by, by next Monday we should have all the responses back, Chair, to all the questions okay. that proposed. Can, can we agree that next Monday? Uh, Cuthbert, I'm sure we can actually agree to that. The written yes. replies. Okay. Chair, that's fine. No problem. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, Andre, can we actually go back then? Can we just uh, just do this, that CEO and the team, sorry for the technology glitches, but maybe for now we can say that because we, we're struggling to actually get proper communication, I'll allow you to conclude and I'm sure they, this is just our first interaction. We will actually have follow-up engagement. And uh, can I allow you to take your closing remarks, uh, Honorable CEO? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, and thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, we will make sure that we respond to all the questions that we asked and also submit a report to, on, you know, to the committee regarding the raids that we conducted in the country. Um, and we are always open to um, members, you know, if, if, there's, you know if, they, if they feel that we need to be in their constituency to educate consumers, uh, we are available, you know, to do that. Um, yeah, I will stop here, Honorable Chairperson. We will submit the report by Monday next week. Okay. No, thank you very much, CEO. I'm sure we can actually allow you to actually depart. And, um, and thanks for the contribution or your discussion with your team. Secretariat, can we then proceed to the next item on the agenda? Uh, thanking the uh, uh, NCR with their presentation and uh, engagement. Secretary, if I may proceed. Chair, we are considering, formally considering the, the report, the third quarter financial and non-financial report of EDD and the Department of Trade and Industry. Chair, last week we worked through the report and there was an in principle agreement by all members to the proposals that were made and, and all members agreed that we can affect the necessary changes. That report was distributed uh, um, to members, so members have, uh, have received that via email. I'm just asking Margot to put that report on, on the screen, but it's basically for us to move formally, move for that adoption of that report. Unless there is a fundamental issue that members want to raise, but all changes that were agreed to was affected chair in the report. So it's a matter of simple procedure of someone moving the, re the, the report and someone seconding the adoption of the report. Unless members want to go through the report again, it will be okay. the call of the team. Yeah. Well, I think uh, concluding remarks and recommendation becomes the main part of the report. If we can actually just go to that uh, um, and then ask that you actually just talk us through that and then see if we are comfortable. We won't actually go through the whole body of the report. And I think um, concluding remarks and the recommendation. So if you can just take us through, Secretariat. Chair, the, the concluding re remark from 4.1, I think if Margaret can just move up, up slowly. We will yeah. see that the, the ch members will see exactly the changes and move up, yeah. Margot. So, Margot, yeah. Yeah. 
This was one was moved from from the recommendation to a concluding remarks, chair. Yeah. That one also was also a, a, a recommendation of move to concluding, if I can yeah, recall. 4.4. 4. 4. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. The master plan 4.7 was also a, re a recommendation to move to the concluding remarks, Chair. Okay. Hello, my name is Mike 4.8 as, as well, Chair. Yes. I think I just have to, to, to switch off somebody's... Um, 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 Who's oh, oh, the mic? I think yes. it's the dango. Yeah, okay. And actually, it's just mute. Yeah. Um, yeah, chair is muted, chair. Okay. Then. 4.10, yeah. That's fine. That was the, the, the African the free trade thing. It was also moved from, from a recommendation to, to a concluding remark, chair. Okay. With, with regard to 4.12, 4. Chair, we, we had BRIC countries there, and we said it should be China, India, and Russia at that given time, Chair. So that yes. was the change there. Yeah. That was 4.1.3 4. was also a recommendation. It moved to, to the concluding remarks, Chair. Yeah. Okay. As well as 4.4, 4. 4. 4, similar process, Chair. We go to the recommendations, Chairperson. Yeah. These were the recommendation agreed to by the committee, and we can just look at it. 6.1, yes. 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19, 6.20, 6
And for that reason, I would I object to the acceptance of the report. Otherwise, as those clause is concerned, uh, the Freedom Front won't be able to support it. Chair? Okay. Yeah. That will be noted, Chair, in the minutes. Ms. Yaku, Chair? Uh, Yaku? Um, thank you, Chair. I think you already know what I will say. Um, Honorable Yaku? Can you hear me? I'm saying that I do not operate in silo and there's many elements in this report that I do not agree with um, and therefore I will take it to the caucus for us to discuss as to what we're going to do with regards to this report but for now I will abstain from comment. Thank you. Chairperson, okay. yes. those, those will be noted chairperson in a minute but the report is then ad adopted as Unless it's any other further comments from other people, Chair. I, I think those are uh, the two um, um, contributions that needs to be noted. Uh, are there any further comments? If none, can we then actually agree uh, that the report is adopted by the committee? Correct, noting the, the two objections. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if there are any other yeah, issues, thank you very much. Uh, the report is agreed to. C can we then um, just proceed? Let me just say that uh, we, we do have uh, from our select committee, uh, Dango, Honorable Dango, with us. And I think uh, the meeting when we started, we were supposed to go joint, uh, uh, both committees meeting. It has got an advantage because at least we're killing two birds with one stone. But I think for today, we were not actually able to get our uh, uh, colleagues uh, for the joint session. We called out to be able to join us today. So I think it's something that we may have to look at as we proceed. Secretary, I'm not sure if ever there's any issues which Chair. you may need to announce. The next meeting. Chair, Chair there's another voice. Uh, was, is, okay. I don't know if it's a cut or what, Chair? Yes. Oh, Thank you, Chair. If, if, I I may, may, if I may please make a comment on the statement you've made, Chairperson. Yeah. Okay. Chair, it seems as if the agenda that was received by the NCOP members from the DA did not list them as members of the committee and only referred to the Portfolio Committee. This is what I'm informed by my colleague, uh, Mr. Brauterseth. So I think there was maybe a little bit of uh, a communication error. And if we can just ensure that going forward where we do have joint committees or joint briefings, that we just ensure that those people are sent the correct information, Chair. Okay. Secretary, do you have any comments? Chair, if I may comment yes. on that, Chair. Also, Chair. Chair, uh, chair there's Ms. Uh, Mantash. If, I would suggest people use the chat, Chair, because uh, we don't talk here then. Okay. Ms. Can, I just check, <laughs> can we check, Honorable Members? Uh, there's one comment we've just received. From Cuthbert. Uh, Mantasha, I, I hear you uh, asking to talk as well. I, uh, I, I did not see what Honorable Mulder was saying he, when in his last comments. He talked about discriminatory laws. Which, which are those discriminatory laws that he's referring to? Because we don't, we don't have such in our laws. Thank you. Chair, so we're not past that point already. Can you explain to our yeah. laws? Which lot is he referring to? Okay. Chair, All right. Um, uh, Mr. Thring, want to come in, Chair? Okay. Thring. Mr. Thring, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, my comment is just a simple, simple one with regards to uh, just making it a little bit easier for us uh, when we're having to access our. Um, our programs and uh, the information that is sent to us, uh, presentations. Um, because I am struggling also to sometimes get the, the, the presentations on my screen, I have to then go to my laptop. Um, but if we have the presentations sent to us, let's say the day, the day before as well, um, sometimes we have presentations for three meetings or two meetings, you know, kind of put together. And then we have, uh, you know, the presentation for the um, for the and on the next day, 
um, and you, you kind of struggle to actually then find the presentation for a particular meeting. So if I could ask that all the presentations for one meeting um, also be sent so that for those of us who are now having to access our laptops, um, it's not having to search all over the place. Like the last time I had to uh, search for the relevant uh, document, which I did not have at the time. So uh, just a request here that all of the presentations uh, for a particular meeting be put perhaps in one folder or one email it becomes easier for us to actually access it. Thank you. Okay, Secretariat. I will comment after that, but Mr. Dango wish to, to, to comment, Chair. Okay, we'll take Dango. Honorable Mr. Dango. Uh, I think also programming would have to be uh, addressed because at times for NCOP members who sit on seven to eight committees, there are clashes, and they would have to choose on which committee to go and sit. I mean, I chose three, but there are other committees sitting this morning as well. Okay, let's go to Secretary. Let, let me just say, um, Honorable Mulder, th there was a comment by Mantashe, and I'm not sure if ever you'd like to talk to that, because there was actually just clarity question she was asking about your comment. Honorable Mulder? Uh, Chair, um, I, I, I'm not quite that I understood Honorable Mantas's question. Um, I just wanted to clarify the fact that uh, in principle there is nothing wrong with the report. It's actually quite um, representing the Freedom Front Plus and that's my opinion as well. I would like to see a South Africa where we all go into the future as equal partners and that it is highly time to get rid of any racial discrimination laws. And I recognize the fact that Triple BE is enshrined in the, in the um, Acts of South Africa. And as Mr. Lionel October said yesterday, and he stated, that um, we have to comply with that, or they, uh, the department has to comply by that, as long as the laws are there and as long as it's not changed. So me voting against or objecting to the report is mainly objection to any racial exclusion measures. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, I, I'm sure, Mantashe, the, the, the comment has been received. Can I then actually just ask the Secretary? And Chair, Mrs. Hermans, wish to, to speak, Chair? Okay, Hermans. Chair, I think we should not leave uh, the statement of Honorable Mulder unanswered, even though he is saying what his party's position is. We are not all equal in South Africa mm -hmm. as far as our economic uh, rights are concerned. We are still a very, 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 there's a very bad distance between the rich and the poor in this country. And that's why that legislation exists in terms of making sure that we bring up those who are the most downtrodden and poor. And unfortunately, that poverty and that poor person is represented by the face of a black woman. So we have lots of work to do. I don't think we are there yet, but we note the, the, the position of the, the FF plus. Okay. No, I think uh, the, 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 the objection is noted. And I think um, the point might be looking at issue of transformation rather than discrimination. So can we actually, we, I'm sure we can continue discussion on that. Mantashe, Hermans, I think we note your comments. Can we go back, Secretary? Uh, chair? Yes, Chair. Yeah. If I may, with regard to the, to the joint meetings, Chair, we do work together with the Secretariat of the NCOP. Um, chair, we also try where possible 
to have joint meetings, but because the NGOP have many other departments that they need to have oversight or, or need to engage with, it's not always possible to have the joint meetings, Chair. So that's where the challenge is. They were informed about this meeting today, and I was informed by the Secretariat that they will not be joining us today, Chair. So that's the issue with regard to the programming. And, Chair, with regard to the distribution of presentations, Chair, it was always the notion that we should, as soon as we receive the presentation, is to distribute to members so that they can timely prepare. Unless there's an alternative decision taken by the committee where we should, although we're in receipt of the presentation, but don't distribute it, but only a day before the time, then we can do it. But the, 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 no, the, the understanding was, as soon as we receive the presentations, forward it to members so the members can prepare what in advance on the matter. But unless it's the other decision taken by the committee to only submit it a day before the time when we receive it, when then, then we will follow that instruction, Chair. But that was always the understanding. As soon as we receive presentations, forward it to members so they can have it well in advance and prepare, Chair. But if there's a challenge for members, the committee needs to indicate to us how we should proceed. Chair, okay. Mr. Mbiani wants to, 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 to raise a comment, Chair, and Ms. Hermans. Um, Muyani and Hammonds. And uh, can I just say maybe before Muyani and Hammonds, I, I thought um, uh, Honorable Tring did add as well to say just for the order of things, because uh, there might be sometimes that it doesn't mean members did not receive the report. It might be difficult for them to find them in the communication they have. I'm sure most of us might be receiving close to 20, 50 emails per day. If you actually try and actually find something, it gets slightly different. But if you got email a day before the meeting, that's actually more manageable. I, I thought that was the soft side yeah, of yeah. what he no, raised as a point. <laughs> so can I take Mbuyane, then Hammond? And Ms. Mutahum, Chair. And Mutahum. Uh, Mbuyane? Chair, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. I just wanted to, to, to clarify, Mr. Mulder, in terms of the issue. It's not a segregation issue, but it's a transformation issue. We know that blacks were segregated, and now blacks must access information and the resources and also the wealth of South Africa. Then, Chair, I'm not so sure whether we're still discussing the report, because assuming the report has been mm -hmm. agreed to approve, the, the report is agreed to. It's, there's yeah. administrative issues before we close our meeting because I thought I should be able to speak about our next meeting tomorrow. That's what I was trying yeah. to do. But there are, there are issues that are coming up which uh, members are, are trying to round up. So okay, it's just mopping up. Uh, Mbuyane is not extending the meeting. The report is agreed to. We noted the two objections from EFF and uh, Freedom Front Plus. Can yeah, you then take you. your are your further comments yeah. and then Mbuyani? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I think our view is proper on that one because the triple P is going to assist us. We are not we are not going to discuss the report that has been adopted. Uh, you can continue with the meeting moving forward in terms of announcement and, and, and closure, Chairperson. Thank you. Yeah. Can you take uh, uh, Chair Mrs. Hermans? Hermans? Oh, it was Hermans, yeah. Hermans. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Um Chair, I think when we schedule our meetings and we can see that it clashes with uh, NCOP meetings and that most of them will not be represented in the meeting, we should not then schedule. I know this was scheduled a while ago. We shouldn't schedule meetings. They should then have their own meetings with, with, with these entities and receive reports so that we uh, make sure that the NCOP's voice is also heard. So then let's uh, convene separate meetings where there are outright clashes, because at the moment we only have one out of the NCOP, NCOP team in our meeting. Thank you. Let's note that, uh, Secretariat. Yes, Chair. We will note that and communicate that to, to the to the Secretariat of the NCOP that they should schedule um, separate meetings if they can't join us on, on certain matters, Chair. 
Yeah, but you see the invitation stands for the joint. If yeah. not possible, then we'll actually yeah. take that. Yes. Are there any other po further points in terms of announcement? Ms. Mutaum Chair, at the hand Chair. Mutaum. And Ms. Mantashe. And Mantashe. Mutaum. No, thanks, Chair. I wanted to comment on the issue of getting documents a day before the meeting. I think the way we are receiving our documents a few days before the meeting it give us enough time to prepare for our meeting. In the situation where a member is having a challenge of getting the prior emails, he or she can indicate to the secretary to be assisted. But I think the way we are receiving our documents before meeting is okay. We don't want to get a um, presentation a day before the meeting. A few okay. days before, it's okay. Andre, Chair. What, uh, when I give you a call to say I can't see my document, I'm sure you'll actually uh, be able to help me just send it Absolutely, up Chair. so that I can if, find it for the next day. No, I think maybe that's more or less. Yeah. Chair, okay. Chair, any member has a challenge finding a document, it's easy to WhatsApp us or SMS us. We will then either forward it again to them, Chair, so that they can have it. But it, it, it's okay. easier a WhatsApp or, or SMS while the okay. meeting is on so they can, they can access it, Chair. It's easy okay. to assist. Honorable Thring, I'm sure that actually helps uh, close the gap. Um, because all of us... Uh, Chair, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, co I'm covered. It's just, uh, I was just looking at helping, trying to make it a little bit easier because we are struggling at times. Uh, yes. With the sound, yes. with the presentations on the screen, yes. then I'll, you know yes. you got to go to your laptop and try to think. Now this was sent to me three, four days ago, and search through your emails. So yes. it does become a bit of yes. challenge. Whereas if we add it in one folder, it's easier. Yeah, but no, honorable I'm, I'm thing, I, honorable thing, I know how you feel. That's my feeling too. Uh, but I always try and call someone and say, "Can you help me?" Uh, but I think uh, let's actually agree then, Secretariat. Uh, for we will... tomorrow meeting, we would actually then, uh, when we conclude, our next meeting is going to be tomorrow. Do you want yes, to comment Chair. on that uh, so that we can actually then conclude our meeting? Chair, we just had that fact that you're meeting with the NEF and the IDC tomorrow. Presentations was forwarded. I think the last presentation was forwarded from the NEF this morning, Chair. So members oh. have the presentations. And... Chair, I think Ms. Mantashi also wanted to comment. Sorry, Chair, before I go. <laughs> oh, I thought there's someone who's actually yawning. Uh, Ms. Mantashi. I was okay, worried, I, I, was so. worried uh, I, thought, I, thought, I thought the Secretariat was suppressing me. But, <laughs> Chair, I, I... No, no, you can talk, Mantashi. You can talk. You can talk. I'm sorry. If I'm, going... yeah. Mantashi. I'm sorry if I'm going... I'm sorry if I'm going to take this committee back, but this is a sore point for me, Chair. It is unfortunate that Honorable Melder brings this at the end of this meeting, but I want to put on record that they have tried to defeat the Triple B, B, Triple B E E Act in the committee, in Parliament. They have gone to courts. Pretoria High Court this last week has told them that it is incorrect to scrap the triple PEE. So they must not shut up and let us imp implement mm. that act. Thank you so much. Mantashe, the energy you are using now, can I ask that at this stage? We note what you say. We have noted what the Honorable Mulder has raised as a point. It's an issue for further discussion engagement on our side. Can we acknowledge and just note what you Chair? say and then note what Mulder has raised with us? So Chair? can I ask Secretariat to then come Chair? in? Secretariat? I do not want to suppress anyone, but Ms. Cuthbert want to also want to raise his hand. Who is that? Mr. Cuthbert. Oh, can, can, uh, Cuthbert, I, I, I was trying to close my meeting earlier. I see members are making sure that we stay in the meeting. <laughs> Chair, as a point Cuthbert, of... Cuthbert, let me Thank hear you. you. Chair, as a point of principle, I hope that in the future when we find ourselves in a similar situation that members of the opposition are given the same latitude to make ad lib comments as they would like after the report has been adopted. Because I can assure you that in the past we have not been given the same opportunity, number one. 
Number two, Chairperson, I don't think that it's appropriate for Ms. Mantash to say that other members of the committee just should shut up. We all center on our own party's mandate, mandate as well as our voters being our constituency. And I think that we should all be given an opportunity to say what we think per, from our own personal perspective. So I don't know if uh, Ms. Mantash is the head girl of this committee and then decides what we're allowed to do as committee members. But if we have a view and we decide to vote in the way that we do, then I think that every committee member should be afforded that opportunity. And I would like to, I would like to understand that the chairperson would ensure that there's fairness at all times in this committee. Oh, that chair. Okay. Can, can I just say, uh, um, um, Andre? I'm chair? Not sure there's no there's no one who wants to say anything. No chair. But the members of the committee do have a right to make any comments. But on my part, I think uh, we I would really encourage that we communicate with each other in the way that we're able to respect each other, acknowledge you know the kind of uh, responsibility we have because we here we represent our political parties, and uh, when actually you have an objection. Let's actually acknowledge, even if we agree or we don't agree with it, we would actually then acknowledge. But it's, it's a manner of communication that one will really ask to do it right. And uh, maybe members have noticed what I'm trying to do. When English gets complicated, I speak in Zulu. And when I speak in Zulu, it's always the best way of communication. I can't actually insult you because... Uh, my African language is generally in a way that you respect the next person. And when I speak in Zulu, I try and make sure that we stay in conversation, not in a way that we actually get conflicting kind of approach. Can I ask that it's a, a point of actually having noted uh, EFF uh, input, uh, freedom from class. I think uh, on our part as committee members, we may not be happy about certain things, but. Let's respect each other. Let's agree on how we communicate. Can we then proceed uh, to conclude our meeting? Can we meet tomorrow? The time is 13, 15, uh, 1500. Is at That's 3. Correct. Yeah. We have the IDC and the NEF talking to us. Honorable members, uh, before we adjourn, Secretary. Just on that, Chair, uh, the link will probably, you members will receive the link this evening, Chair. Okay. So the link will receive this evening. Yeah. Thank you very much. The, the meeting is urgent, and thanks for your participation. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Andre.
هاي كلش و الو هاي هاي دوينغ ام جود ان هاو يو جود 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 محمد يا اي سي تي
is it okay um is it possible then say to have other members pictures i see ma'am verse ma'am verse secretary is yeah so they 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 uh, please also switch on your video when you speak your video is okay i'm happy about it um honorable mva mvana um your video is not i i can see i don't know if you are using a phone yes chapesi it's the phone mado can you please ask um, fcc to take me off a they are using the sound can you address this um, we are listened to by the public now during our briefing mado please ad ad um, address this okay i'm on it i'm on it thank you Hello, Shelly. Hello, ma'am. Hi, it's Kelly. Hi. My camera is not working, so. You, Kelly, so if your camera is, are you going to speak, ma'am? No, no, no. Okay. I, if, because I'm the secretary, but. Uh, that's what. But is it that uh, isn't it that there is a time of the roll call you have to confirm and do that? Um, we will use a slide. It's okay. It's okay. But we would love to to have had your video on. Your sound is okay though. Mahamad was assisting. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm still here. Um, I was sharing my screen to, with you earlier to show you. Uh, is it possible that you can see your your meeting screen? I just want to see what you see. Okay. Who is talking? Uh, colleagues. Sorry, Ms. Moncho, this is Mohammed Pende from ICT. Hi, Mohammed. Yes, I can see Miss um, Koliswa. Is it Mve? Mvese. Mvese. Nevese is a committee secretary. Her video is okay. Her video is okay. Okay. Yeah, we can see you very clearly. It's perfect, in fact. That's nice. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yes, it's, it's working perfectly. Okay, thanks. Okay, ma. Um, Koliswa, did you manage to share the screen? Um, Vana, um, her video needed to be fixed. Is it not okay, Chair? Now. Um, is it not okay now? There we go. Ma'am, it is okay. It is okay. Only if if you can see me. Um, I'm able to see you, Chair. No, no, no I'm, not, I'm just uh, from communication. Um, ma'am, if your video, yes, you know what? I'm a person like you because you understand so quick. Your video is fine, ma'am, like that. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Chef. Thanks, Koliswa? Koliswa? Who is this committee manager? Hello, Mahamad. Koliswa, I'm waiting yeah. on you to... I'm waiting on you to share your screen. I want to see your screen, what you see, so I can guide you here. No, Polisa uh, is, is okay. I can see her video. She is perfectly okay. What Polisa? That it's known to that one that you are seeing on the other screen. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, no, that's okay, ma'am. So when I share the screen, it says download the uh, team for this means that's what. Uh, I can see on my side when I'm sharing the screen. The thing is, when you share your screen, then Muhammad, we should... Muhammad, you know yes. what? We are four minutes to air now. We are four yeah. minutes to air. We need to be finding a solution. Can't Koliswa, whatever that she has, can't you just take it and then you share as and when it's needed? Presentation and, and whatever. Is no, it no, possible? No, no. We are three minutes to 
Eh. No, she wanted to share his. She wanted her video to display, and she doesn't know how to switch it on. Oh, okay, as a backup. But is it ne yeah, but is it needed that we her video? She's a committee secretary. No, it's fine. Assistant? So we don't have no, to display no, no, as long as we display the members. No, the secret the committee secretaries are also needed. As long as you are going to speak on A, you will be needed to reveal the picture for the public to see what, who you are speaking to. Um, I'm a bit worried. Also, um, ma'am, the committee secretary especially, can you please also remind the chairperson to remind members to switch their videos on? And the department to reveal their videos <coughs> as well as remove the, oh, oh, the presentation when they finish because we are really, really having a problem with that. When the minister is briefing, can they first allow the minister to speak and only when the, DD, the DG starts to present, then the, the, the presentation must be up. Oh, thank you, Peter, I, I, I would do, uh, I, I think that's how far I can go. We are left with two minutes. I don't know if ever, I don't want, uh, the chairperson is around. Um, I don't want to waste more time. Uh, where the minister is, can, can you say, because you are sitting on the minister's um, uh, um, can the minister's chair move to her right a little bit? Please reveal it. Can she move to the left hand side because you are going to us? She's cut by the shoulder. Is it possible to reveal it again? Okay, we can go and. Is there more? No, I'm going to the room, but they are already on. Good morning, members. Subscribing to join the meeting, but I'm assisting her. She'll join us uh, soon. Thank you. Good morning, Chair. How are you? Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Hello. 
Yes, 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 good, good, good day, honorable members, and how are you this morning? Good, thanks, Chair, and how are you? I'm fine. Pili le te, pili le wen. I was in another hand just now. My apologies for joining later. Um, I want to take this opportunity to welcome everybody. I, I qualify everybody. Are we having the numbers to start the meeting? Can you, check, can you please turn on? Can you turn your camera, please? Turn off what? Your camera, please. Sam, so turn off what? Turn on your camera, Turn on. on. Now my camera. I can't see it. Uh, it's somewhere there. <laughs> hey. I, I can't see the camera. Um... <laughs> Police were? Police were? Police were? Hello. Hi, I'm trying to call you. Can you answer your phone when I, because then I can assist, so I can assist you with the camera uh, and not in the Teams app. I will phone you again now. Well. I turn off your turn off your, your, your sound. Do me a favor, send me a screenshot. Send me a screenshot via WhatsApp. Uh, chairperson, the camera is next to the, the microphone. That little thing. The the what is the, the, the camera is next to uh, uh, the mic of the mic. And, and, and as well, the host, Hello, the host can assist. Yes. Can we Hello, Chair Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, can we can we start with our meeting? Is our guest uh, here uh, AG connected? Uh, Koliswa? Yes, ma'am. They are connected. Okay. Um, let's take this opportunity to observe a moment of silence for me. For, for prayer or meditation. We can hear you, Chairperson. We can hear you. But we can, we don't. Oh, your, your picture. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. So, um, honourable members, um, today's agenda we are going to do. We are going to uh, deal with the annual report of the Department of Water and Sanitation. Um, we we have invited amongst us um, Auditor General to come and give the the, the, uh, the brief 
so that as members we can then engage with the annual report um, better. Um, we know that department was supposed to have um, tabled their report in in in. In, in, in at the end of financial year, and they didn't do that. They will give us the, they will indicate uh, why it was not, not done at the right time. Um, I think both the AG and 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 the department will talk about that. But we we, we just thought it's important that we have the to deal with the annual report before we deal with the. Um, strategic plan for the department and APPs. So I want to take this opportunity to welcome Auditor General and his team and allow them to present um, now. Audit AG. Yes, 